To the citizens of Brookfield, uh, officials and guests, the 2019 Brookfield Annual Town Meeting is hereby called to order. To either of the constables of the town of Brookfield and the county of Worcester, greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of said town qualified to vote in elections and town affairs to meet at the elementary school, 37 Central Street, Brookfield, Mass., on Friday, the 14th day of June in the year 2019 at 6.30. And there to act on the following articles. Pursuant to and within the warrant, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Brookfield by posting the attested copies of the same to the U.S. Post Office on Wednesday, June 5th, 2019, and the Brookfield Town Hall on the same day, seven days before the date of the meeting, as herewith directed. Uh, signed by Richard LaPierre, Constable Linda Lincoln, Clarence Snyder, and Town Clerk Mike Seary. So I declare that we do have a quorum. Um, what I would like to do is uh, have everybody rise and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance if we could please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you. A couple of announcements just before we get started. Um, if you have a cell phone, if you could shut it off, I'd certainly appreciate it. Um, only registered voters should be seated in the main section of the uh, floor here. If you are a non-voter or a non-resident, you have to sit at either side. Um, all speakers must approach and use the microphone. When you speak for the first time, please state your name and your address. Anyone wishing to speak must first be recognized by the moderator, and you must speak to the moderator. Please address all comments to the moderator. Speak only to the point which is on the floor for discussion. Speak clearly and briefly as well. We have a lot to do tonight and like to keep moving. Be courteous and respectful. All voters will be voice, voice votes unless two-thirds majority is necessary. Uh, if it is unanimous, it will be declared. If it is, there is a dissenter, then we must do a standing vote. I do have two counters, and they will move among you and do the counting. Move the question. If a motion is made to move the question to a vote, a vote will be taken to, to uh, the motion. Um, and anyone in the standing in line at the microphone at the time that the motion is made will be allowed to speak, given the opportunity to speak, and then the question will be moved. Move to pass over requires a second, followed by a brief explanation as to why the article is requested to be passed over, and then the pass over vote will be taken. Amending a motion, only one proposed amendment will be allowed on the floor at a time. Uh, quick quick uh, introductions, because we have a number of people at the front table here which, who are not identified with name tags, um, seated next to Lincoln, starting next to Linda Lincoln and moving to the left, I would like those people to stand up and give their name and who they represent and why they're here. Thank you. Good evening folks, I'm Charlotte Hazel from the Law Good evening, I'm Karen Trainer, the Executive Assistant of the Board of Selection. Hello, Lonnie Creatia, Interim Town Treasurer. <coughs> Jared Jamolo, uh, Helping Town Treasurer. Lori Barkett, from Eric Kinshirt, CPA, and the current Town Accountant. Thank you. Also at this time, I'd like to thank Don Fagner for his years as uh, serving as moderator for this town. I'd also like to uh, thank Herb Chafee. Thank you. I am. 
And I'd also like to recognize Herb Chafee. Is Herb here? Didn't see Herb, but Herb served as many years as our uh, highway superintendent. I would also like to, to have you recognize two new employees, uh, Ryan Pontraban. Ryan here. Ryan is our new highway superintendent. Ryan. And also Dennis Clark. Dennis is our new water superintendent. <laughs> new faces in town, I thought it was an opportunity for you to get to, to meet them in person. Also, the community club is providing babysitting. I don't know the particulars about it, but if anybody needs babysitting, uh, somebody from the community club can help you. Article 1. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to the 2000, FY 2019 snow and ice account or take any action thereto. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer $36,358 from stabilization account to the FY 2019 snow and ice account. We have a motion and a second. Oh, and what, what we're doing is we have quite a few articles, not that many. It comes up to about, I think, 119,000 that we're going to be taking out of stabilization tonight. And when uh, we have our free cash, will we vote to put that money back in? Hello. Um, my name is Steve Gillis. I'm the chair of the advisory board. The advisory board is here. Um, just wanted to make sure everyone read through this opening statement, okay? Uh, in it, you will see um, relevant financial information for tonight, including the stabilization fund is at $668,328 currently. Uh, that's 8.22% of our 2019 annual budget. Uh, <clears throat> going right down from the top, revenue and levy limits. Uh, uh, our levy limit is uh, calculated by taking the 2019 levy limit, adding 2.5% plus new growth. That new growth number is a five-year average. Uh, debt exclusion gets added to that. So the total living limit is $5,748,294. Add to that total state aid and total local receipts. Local receipts are, are, are excise taxes and various property tax, uh, not property taxes and things like that. And so our total available revenue is $9,205,691. Uh, against that, our expenses, <clears throat> the uh, a budget that we're submitting for approval, uh, $8,417,649. Expenditures offsetting receipts coming, uh, being added to that. So the total expenses without the articles is $8,815,502. Uh, our excess levy capacity <clears throat> is uh, $300,000. $80,189 and, um, and so there's, there's, there's good room there, you know, under our levy limit. Um, the most challenging aspects of this year were the, um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the budget process were the resignations of both town accountant and town treasurer and thus the lack of certified free cash uh, knowing this, the Board of Selectmen working with the Advisory Committee uh, and the Capital Improvement Plan chose to limit the spending articles to the ones that are in this document tonight. And these were um, essentially necessities here. Um, advisory recommends using town stabilization fund to pay for the warrant articles at this town meeting. And then with the expectation at the fall special town meeting, we will have um, uh, free cash uh, certified and we'll be able to replenish the stabilization fund at that fall town meeting. That's, that's what you're gonna hear from us. Um, the main factors impacting our budget include, include wages around new hires and contracted salaries. Tantasqua held it to a 3% increase. 
assessments and mandated expenses continue to increase. But offsetting these, we uh, our, 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 our department has done an excellent job of, of uh, you know, uh, maximizing the collections and, uh, and enforcement efforts. Uh, the assessor's office continues to have uh, efforts to update our records so that our tax base fully reflects current conditions of the properties. And in this standing, advisory has recommended a 2.5% COLA cost of living allowance for all town employees. Uh, thank you for being here. It's important. And uh, that's all I have to say right now. <coughs> Did you have? So the motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Article number two, see if the town will vote to accept an annual report of the town officials as printed and take any action thereto. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move, I move that the town vote to accept the annual report of the town officials as printed. <coughs> there is a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Motion passes, thank you. Article number three, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow such sums of money as may be necessary to defray the expenses of the town for the ensuing year to take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town raise and appropriate such sums of money as might be necessary to defray the expenses of the town for the ensuing year as shown in the fiscal year 20 budget advisory committee recommendations as contained in the annotated warrant. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? We, we do the line that Okay. All right, so if you would, turn in your warrant to the budget as printed in the back. What I will do is read each line, and if you have a question or if you'd like that line to be held, please speak up. We will put that on hold and we will address that at the very end. Yes? I believe on Article 1, all we did was vote the question. I don't believe we actually voted on Article 1. That's what we did. We just wanted to vote the question, right? No. Okay. I, I, I we, we, so we need to re-vote Article 1? Yeah, I, I didn't get a second for my move the question. I did, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear it. Thank you. So somebody needs to make a recommendation to reconsider article number one. And is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So we will now reconsider article one. Do we need to rate it again? To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to the two FY2019 snow and ice account or take any action relative thereto. Second. All right, this requires a two-thirds vote. Point of order, Mr. Bobby. You have to say, you can't say to say if, you have to say you moved to appropriate that particular sum. So it should really be something like this. I, I moved to appropriate $36,358 to the FY2019 snow and ice account. Okay. All right, so I've read the article, do I? Mr. 
Yes. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer the sum of $36,358 in stabilization account to the FY 2019 snow and ice account. So a motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Unanimous, thank you. Moving on to Article 3, which is the budget. I will read each line. If you have a question or you'd like it to be held, please speak up. Moderator salary, $50. I am reading from the FY20 Advisory Committee recommended amounts, by the way. Selectman salary, $6,000. Selectman administrative assistant wages, $44,721. So, a question? Yes. The column that says percentage increase or decrease says zero there, but um, I understood the term of the advisory committee to say it would be a 2.5%, and there is an increase there. So what do we make of that column? <laughs> Advisory. I don't know whether it's an advisory board question or... I, I believe the way I read it is that percentage is a change from the FY19 budget line item. It's zero. Ad advisory? <clears throat> Looking at it. I see the... There is an error. I It is a 2.5% increase, so there's an error in the column. Could you please come uh, come to the microphone, please? Oh, um, I think that the column... Please, please identify yourself. Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah Heller. Uh, the column heading says requested, and the requested does not increase. So the, the column refers to the requested, not to the recommended. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Okay, line four, Selectman Municipal Clerk wages, $11,574. Number five, Selectman expenses. Yes, Steve. I might as well just say this. Uh, right up front, all wage items do have 2.5% COLA in the advisory committee recommended column. And um, Ms. Teller is correct, uh, the, the requested amounts, the advisory committee always rec always requests all departments to level fund their budget, including, well, in other words, any wage items are at level five, and then and then the advisory makes a recommendation for the actual cola if they're if they're even in. And so and so all advisory committee recommended uh, in that column do have the 2.5% cola in there. So the, the, the bottom line of this budget includes that 2.5%. And my best to make it loud. Yes, if you, anybody speaking, if you could use the microphone, that would be a big help. <coughs> Moving on, item five, selectman expenses, $9,000. Selectman physical examinations, $800. Select seven, selectman payment in lieu of taxes, $850. Selectman, uh, eight, selectman computer maintenance, $17,000. Nine, Selectman Town website and email, $6,000. Number 10, computer security, $2,000. 11, Selectman consultant expenses, $10,000. 12, Selectman computer acquisition, $5,000. 13, Central Mass Regional Planning Commission, $980. Number 14, cable access, $2,220. 
rent right of wages, $19,988. Uh, Mr. Moderator? Yes. I'd like to put a hold on number 14. Hold on 14. Number 16, rent right of expenses, $1,200. We, we did grant writer, okay? Moving on to 18, reserve fund, $25,000. 19, legal services, $100,000. Question. Question. <coughs> Hold. Hold. Number 20, town accountant salary, $47,970. 21, town, account, town accountant clerk, $3,783. 22, town accountant expenses, $6,800. 23, town accountant professional services, $1,000. 24, town accountant certified stipend, zero. Moving on to 26, advisory committee expenses, $500. 27, advisory committee uh, clerk salary, $526. 28, advisory committee warrant books, $1,200. <coughs> 30, assessor stipend, $1,500. 31, assessor's principal assessor wages, $48,147. Line 32, assessor's certified stipend, $1,000. 33, assessor's clerk wages, $15,170. 34, assessor's consulting expenses, $1,000. 35, assessor's expensive, $8,705. Line 37, treasurer's salary, $47,970. 38, treasurer consultant, $10,000. 39, assistant treasurer wages, $30,107. I'm sorry, $20,107. 40, treasurer's payroll services, $7,100. 41, treasurer expenses, $10,000. 43, collector salary, $44,871. 44, collector certified stipend, $1,000. 45, collector expenses, $9,900. Collector, 46, collector software, $6,860. 47, treasurer collector tax titles, $10,000. 48, town clerk salary, $33,696. Town clerk assistant wages, $4,287. <coughs> town clerk expenses, $2,600. 52, elections and registration wages, $5,884. 53, elections and registration expenses, $6,000. 55, conservation commission clerk wages, $938. 56, conservation commission expenses, $400. 58, planning board clerk wages, $3,877. 59, planning board salary, $2,500. 60, planning board expenses, $2,790. Line 62, board of appeals wages, $880. Line 63, board of appeals expenses, $510, sorry. Line 65, municipal custodian wages, $14,740. 66, municipal property maintenance and improvements, $10,000. 67, municipal property utilities, $5,000. 
68. Town Hall Improvements, $15,000. 70. Print Town Report, $1,800. 71. Uh, municipal Heating Fuel, $6,500. Moving to public safety, line 75. Police wages full time, $242,758. 76, police chief salary, $79,753. 77, police wages part time, $66,146. 78, police clerk wages, 11,998. 79, police overtime wages, $50,500. 80, police expenses, $61,466. 61 Fire department, line 82. Fire wages, $49,746. 83, fire chief salary, 3,634. 80, line 84, fire expenses, $34,000. Line 85, fire utilities, $9,500. 86, fire testing and recertification, $12,000. Line 87, fire fixed asset repair and replacement, $13,000. Moving on to telephone, line 89, telephone contract and leases. $6,510. Line 90, building inspector salary, $17,271. 91, building inspector assistant wages, $558. 92, building inspector expenses and training, $300. Line 94, gas and plumbing inspector salary, $4,277. 95, gas and plumbing inspector assistant wages, $356. 96, uh, gas and plumbing inspector expenses and training, $790. Line 97, wiring inspector salary, 4246 Line 98, wiring inspector assistant wages, $366. Line 99, wire inspector expenses and training, $400. <coughs> Line 101, zoning enforcement officer salary, $11,665. Is that a hold? Yes. Line 102, Zoning Enforcement Officer Expenses, $380. Line 104, Emergency Management Agency, $3,500. Line 105, Emergency Management Agency Salary, $442. Line 106, Blackboard Connect Annual Fee, $3,700. Line 108, Animal Control Officer Salary, $6,228. Line 109, Animal Control Officer Assistant Wages, $701. Line 110, Animal Control Officer Expenses, $2,000. Line 112, Parking Ticket Clerk and Hearing Officer Salary, $250. Line 113, Parking Ticket Expenses, $100. Line 115, tree warden expenses, $20,000. Line 116, shade tree expenses, $2,500. On to schools, line 116, uh, 118, I'm sorry. School committee salary, $1,500. 119, regional committee salary, $1,000. Line 120, Regional School Assessment, $1,637,821. Line 20, 121, Transportation, 
five hundred and nine dollars. Line 122, school expenses, three million one hundred and eighty-seven thousand eight hundred twenty-three dollars. Moving on to public works, highway, line 124, highway superintendent wages, sixty-two thousand five hundred dollars. Line 125, highway operators, operator wages, $86,180. $86,130, I'm sorry. Line 126, highway other wages, part-time and overtime, $5,625. Line 127, highway um, office administrative assistant, $19,797. Line 128, highway police detail and flaggers, $3,570. 129, seasonal worker, $16,400. Line 130, highway expenses, $62,100. Line 131, highway utilities, $9,000. Line 132, highway uh, certifications, DOT physicals and license renewal, $930. Line 133, highway bridges, rails, and signs, $1,600. Line 134, municipal diesel fuel, $20,000. Line 135, municipal gasoline, $26,820. Line 137, snow and ice account, $75,000. Line 138, street lights, $12,500. Line 139, cemetery wages, $18,622. Line 140, cemetery superintendent salary, $5,446. Line 141, cemetery expenses, $6,000. Line 142, cemetery improvements, $1,500. Down to health and sanitation and special services. Line 145, board of health salary, $3,764. Line 146, board of health clerk wages, $5,970. Line 147, Board of Health Agent, $721. Line 148, Board of Health Animal Inspector Salary, $1,188. Line 149, Board of Health Title V Administration, $522. Line 150, Board of Health Expenses, $4,000. Line 152, transfer station wages, $26,332. Line 153, transfer station well test, $12,789. Line 154, transfer station expenses, $96,418. Line 156, community health program, $950. Line 157, Council on Aging Outreach, Outreach Worker, $1,569. Line 158, Council of Aging Tri-Valley Crisis Intervention, $799. Question. That's on 158? Yes. 159, Council of Aging Medicare, $2,000. Line 160, Council of Aging Expenses, $1,400. Line 162, Director of Veterans Services Salary, $1,083. Line 163, Veterans Agent Salary, $3,788. Line 164, Veterans Agent Expenses, $240. Line 165, Veterans Agent Casework, $55,000. Moving on to cultural and recreation, line 168. 
Library Director Wages, $42,734. Line 169, Library Custodian Wages, $7,530. Line 170, Library Assistant Wages, $32,000. $942. Line 171, Library Saturday Holiday Vacation, $3,761. Line 172, Library Expenses, $13,200. One, line 173, Library Utilities, $1,800. Line 174, Library Books, Videos, and periodicals, $26,500. Line 176, Recreation Commission Expenses, $8,100. Line 177, South Pond Beach Expense, $1,250. Line 179, Historical Commission, $1,155. Question. Line 180, Memorial Day, $3,286. Line 181, Cultural Council Expenses, $8,866. Debt and Interest. Line 183, Police Station Principal, $115,000. Line 184, Police Station Interest, $40,000. Line 185, Sawmill Dam Principal, $7,265. Line 186, Sawmill Dam Interest, $3,286. Assessment and other mandated expenses. Line 188, Worcester County Retirement, $285,203. Line 189, Unemployment Insurance, $14,000. Line 190, Group Health and Life Insurance, $512,177. Line 191, Medicare Town Share, $57,165. Line 192, General Insurance, $145,343. Water Department, line 195, Water Department Commission Salary, $1,800. Line 196, Water Department Clerk Wages, $11,990. Line 197, Water Department Superintendent Salary, $75,000. Yes, Moderator. Yes. Hold. Uh, 198, Water Department Secondary Operator Wages, $7,175. Line 199, Water Department Temporary Help, $2,760. Line 200, Water Department Expenses, $31,700. Uh, $31, the last two items, line 203 and 204, are covered by Articles 19 and 20, so we will not read those this time. Any items that need to be held that were not held as we went through? Those, those items that are held. Item 14. Item 19. Item 101. One fifty eight, one seventy nine, one ninety seven. Is that right, Mike? <coughs> Go back and hold one twenty two school expenses. Yes. <laughs> Okay, thank you. 
So with the exception of those items that have been held, like a motion to approve the amounts as read, which is the FY20 Advisory Committee recommended amounts. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I motion that we raise and appropriate the budget as indicated in the advisory committee recommended column, less the questioned items as indicated uh, in the warrant book. Do we have a, do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I put a hold on item 14, cable access. Will you please state your name I'm and sorry. address? Erin Mahoney. One. Um, I put a hold on number 14, cable access. Um, cable access is an entity in the town that receives its funding in trying its entirety from. Pardon me. Is that better? Yes. Thank you. Um, cable access is an entity in the town that receives its funding in entirety from a gr two grants given to it by Charter slash Spectrum. We have never asked the town for money. We did not ask the town for money. So if anyone in advisory on the select board knows what this line item is for, I would love to know. <laughs> Make a motion that uh, that our non-residents seated at the table, specifically our uh, town council, our administrative assistant, our town treasurer interim, our town treasurer consultant, and our um, accounting services representative uh, be allowed to speak as required. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion passes. Thank you. Okay, Sharon, what that is, is that's the Spectrum Charter Communications Bill, as you probably already know, and for some reason, last year, the uh, town accountant did put it under the purview of the Selectman's budget, so we kept it the same, only because I I physically pay for it, so it come, must come out of that account, I don't know. So what you're referring to is the internet service from the Charter? internet service, yes, okay. correct, that's what that is. Thank you, that answers my question. Okay, you're welcome. So that question being answered, do we have a motion? Do you have a motion to accept line uh, cable access line 14 as read? Yeah. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Line 19, uh, legal services. Mr. Marder, James Cook, 180 Rice Corner Road. Yes, sir. Um, I placed a hold on this item because I have a question as to why it's gone up so much. And I would like to follow up question if I may. So the, the main reason we have two a a active activities, uh, one, one where we have White's Landing that's going to come back around and we have the racetrack that's coming back around. So both, both of those will require uh, some attention beyond what we would normally expect. Uh, in the case of White's Landing, just so that we all know, that the town spent $84,000 one fiscal year ago to close out a land taking at White's Landing. We estimated when that taking was to take place that the D by DOT that it was going to cost the town $7,000. It cost the town $84,000. And one of the things that we are doing, working act actively with the Department of Transportation, they had said, because it took so long to get through the courts, that, uh, uh, that the, uh, the project was closed, and so therefore there was no, mo no more money for the town other than this original $7,000. We didn't think that that was proper. And so with that, and with the assistance of Senator Gobi's office, we've gone back to DOT to at least try to split the $84,000 that we ended up spending. So that, that, that's the first one. The uh, second is that we have been active 
with respect to cleaning up solid waste uh, disposal sites within the town. There are, for, by Nick uh, Tomo, your zoning enforcement officer is in California on vacation, so he could not be here. But he shared with me that he has three additional sites that need to be worked. Um, with the moderator's permission, I'd like a follow-up question. I'll just like to write it. Um, since you alluded to the fact that we're involved in a couple court cases and that we ended up having to pay more than we anticipated on the White's Landing land taking, under the worst case scenario, what's the maximum legal exposure to the town? No? As, as far as White's Landing specific? Well, is, is, it regards all the cases. Well, I mean, when, then I, 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 Michelle, can you? Through you, Mr. Moderator, good evening, folks. You're catching me early in the night. Um, so any legal budget, litigation, whether it be defense of litigation or proactive litigation brought by the town, is usually the piece that is the least predictable of all things. Um, and that tends to take up the greatest part of your budget in years where there's a big uptick. Um, I can never give you a ballpark idea of what that total amount will be. I think 100,000 is, is probably about right. Um, I will say that on some of the enforcement actions where we've been almost universally, if not universally successful this past two fiscal years, um, we are going to be recovering. We have recovered some amount of legal fees in those actions and we expect to um, get a court approval for more. So there'll be, you'll see an offset um, that we anticipate with those actions as well. Thank you. Peter Misuso, River Street. I would like to ask what the process is to hire the specific town council that we use. <coughs> every year, every year the selectmen vote to rehire the town council. There's the problem in question. So how does this not go out to like a competitive offering to other representatives to this town? With the moderator's permission, it's specifically exempt from procurement under General Law Chapter 30B. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Mr. Holcraft. Uh, J.D. Holcraft, uh, Six Island Road. Um, now that we have the county here, the 84000 that was paid to White Sland and was that can you tell me how that was? got questions if it was legally done? We didn't see it come out. The advisory board never got documentation, and I didn't see any town vote taken on where this money came from. So, Mr. Moderator, first, I understand the question to be with regards to actions taken in the prior fiscal year. So, I'm not sure whether or not it's appropriately before this meeting to discuss that. So it's going to stay under the rug. That's how it's been the last year. I'd like an answer if I could get one, please. Well, well, I think there's a lot of people here that would like to hear it. It's not in this fiscal year. It's not relevant. It's not a bill, Linda. Eighty-four thousand was not a bill to the there was, town. There was, there was a court judgment with okay, respect to different. with respect to the amount. I believe, although I'm, I, I wasn't the attorney that handled that case, but I believe that they, we tried to negotiate a lower amount. It was a it was an agreement that was concluded under the purview of the court. So it wasn't a it was a, an agreement that occurred in essence at the at the last hour prior to a, a judgment being made where both parties agreed to it, placed that agreement before the court and it has the, the same force as a legal judgment. My my question is the policy of how that money was divvied out from the town where it came from and, and did it affect the tax rate? I mean, it didn't show up anywhere. So I want to know it how, it, how it was divvied out. That's what I want to know. It does show how up. How it was paid. It, it does show up under under the uh, tax recapitulation uh, as a direct as a direct expense. You have it here. 
copy of it. So this is. So um, I met with Department of Revenue. This is uh, Division of Local Services, the tax recapitulation recap fiscal year 2019 form, and it's stated right here, amount to be raised. So it is a raise and appropriate. Okay, it's, it's line number three, final awards uh, with the judgment that we're referencing. Okay, so the townspeople didn't have, didn't have to vote or have a say on it then, is that what you're saying? If there is good news, and it's difficult to work with the Department of Transportation, let me tell you, uh, we've been struggling on this thing to go back against that $84,000 judgment because it really, we were told it was going to be $7,000, and that's just what we expected. It was not. And so we believe that the Department of Transportation at least owes something back to the town based on the judgment that we've received. Michael Dean, 12 West Main Street. Uh, we have a question. Uh, I've heard that we have uh, some $30,000 supposed to be coming back to the town for legal fees. I just wonder what the status of those are when they might be coming back. Through you, Mr. Moderator, we've presently received $6,000 in attorney's fees that's in hand. Now, that doesn't go to the legal budget. That goes into the general fund, and once it's so it goes through the process of being certified, then it would be available to you for appropriation. Um, we have not yet gotten a court order for additional fees, although we do anticipate that we've submitted a request for that. Um, and if you bear with me, I believe that that amount is gonna be somewhere for attorney's fees, about thirteen or $14,000. That's the request. I can't guarantee we're gonna get it, um, but the <coughs> that re represents attorney's fees. There's another um, amount in fines that may also be coming back to the town not known when yet? Can I get to it, Ms. Adams? It's such a court, court process. Okay, thank you. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to follow up on Mr. Masuza's comments and the town councils. Although the state law does not require that the Department of Town Council follow the same provisions as many of the other procurement laws, it is within the purview of the selectmen like to conduct a review. When I was on the Tantastic School Committee, we used to automatically appoint counsel until a number of us, including myself, asked that we do a review. I would urge the selectmen like to do a review. It should be a standard practice every few years. And did how many other attorneys applied for the position? Well, see, when we did it at Tantastic, we actually sent out a bid. <laughs> We put in some legal, the Massachusetts, the legal paper from Massachusetts. So we actually, and I would urge you to do the same. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Um, you know, I'm speaking as a town resident. Um, I, I would just like to ask, are we close to coming in at uh, budget on the fiscal year 19? It's my understanding we're not going to be in on budget. And if that's the case, do we anticipate uh, going over in the fiscal year 20 budget, um, that's a huge increase in legal fees. And if it's due to certain uh, court cases, then I think that maybe we should slow down on trying to attack more cases uh, because we're a town that has a, a, a difficult time certifying free cash over the past few years as it is. We're dipping into stabilization to pay for things. And we're just piling up legal fees like crazy. And I just want to know, like, when we figure it's going to level off. Mr. Moderator, through you. Yes. Um, so the the budget, as rec as we requested to the advisory committee this year, is takes into account the activity um, that we had this year as well as the, the foreseen activity for next year. And, and we have made some very specific choices to start to, to, we had to do two things. We had to close out issues that had been created by, um, pet, yeah, on free, honestly, both past, past judgments and activities where the early engagement in an issue that occurred, occurred in such a manner that it, it, it put us in 
a poor position to deal with the, the future outcomes, okay? Things like the litigation around White's Landing. If things had been handled in a more, um, if they could have been, if they could have been handled up front in, in different ways, some of these are issues that we're closing out that have had been ongoing for years. Okay. Now, some of the activity that's the new activity from this board, okay, it is, you know, in keeping with with a lot of the the values of us trying to to bring our community to a point where uh, we can take pride in both our own property and our neighbor's property. Okay, and that's why there's there there is activity in, in with regards to more than one property, more than one landowner, with with the intent of protecting everybody's property values, increasing the quality of life within the community, um, and and quite frankly, it it puts us in a position uh, where it's clear that if our actions weren't warranted, we wouldn't be getting legal fees back. Okay, we wouldn't be getting fines awarded by state level courts. So if anyone thinks that this is frivolous legal action, okay, think about the fact, the level of support that it's gotten to the point where we're getting that reimbursement for, for the town's costs. Does that answer your question? My question was, are we going to come in budget uh, for fiscal year 19, and do we, in, in, do we anticipate going over the $100,000 budget in, in uh, 20? I don't believe that was answered. Um, I think it's great that we want to clean up the town. Don't get me wrong. I think that's awesome. Uh, I just think that we should uh, work within our means in our town at the same time. And, uh, you know, it's not, I think, having legal counsel um, that we have, it's, you know, a, a lot of our residents in town can't afford good lawyers to go up against that, so of course we're winning, that's great. Um, but if I get those questions answered, I'd appreciate it. Our, our current plan through you, Mr. Moderator, is to be on budget for FY20, um, and in essence, that's why we're trying to set it, where we're trying to set it is to ensure that we do keep to the budget. Thank you. Bill. Hi, Bill Simpson, uh, North Brookfield Road, Brookfield. Um, I, I'd just like to make a motion that we uh, accept the 100,000 uh, line item advisory committee recommended amount for this uh, item. Second. 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 Motion has been made and seconded. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Mike Seary, town resident, uh, West Main Street. The question was, are we over budget right now with our legal fund? And if we are, I don't see any articles here tonight to pay for that. So how do the selectmen anticipate paying if we are indeed over budget? I just don't want to see this go into the legal judgment or assessment fund without the taxpayers knowing it. That's the question. Thank you. We are currently over budget with legal fees for this year. We have a plan to transfer money through an end of year transfer from other Could you funds. use the mic, please? So we are currently over budget for fiscal year 19 for legal fees. We are gonna use an end of year transfer process from other funds that currently still have money available. So we do not need to supply extra funding for fiscal year 19. Through you, Mr. Moderator, I just, I, I know I said it before, but I just want to reiterate that our forecast for what we're going to recover in some of the enforcement actions, we'll, we're anticipating that in the next fiscal year, but it will cover fees that were incurred both in 18 and 19. So it's, you know, to some extent we're juggling the figures a little bit because it's not going to be a direct relation back in the current fiscal year, um, but, you know, we are taking every effort to minimize the ultimate out-of-pocket expenditure for legal fees through, through actions to recover those additional monies. So the motion has been made and seconded for line 19 legal services to be funded at $100,000. All 
All those in favor say aye. Aye. And opposed? No. No. Motion passes. Next line that I have is line 101, Zoning Enforcement Officer Salary. My name is Ed Judah, Town Farm Road. I make a motion that we pass over this line because I believe it's a little loaded and probably riddled with a little nepotism for its salary. So I make a motion that we pass over this out. Second. Second. Is there a second? Second. So a motion has been made and seconded to pass over line 101, zoning enforcement officer's salary. This is a motion to pass over this item. All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? No. no. It is not passed over. Are there any other questions? Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move the line 101 at $11,665. Motion has been made and seconded on line 101. Could I make a comment? Can you explain to me why that salary is so high? Pepsi Washburn, 12 Maple Street. Can you explain why that salary is extremely high for the amount of, uh, of our budget in this town? I mean, $11,000 for our zoning officer? That's ridiculous. Is he out there that much that he's zoning so much that he val he's valued at that $11,000? Yes. I mean, do we really have that much zoning issues? Yeah. Except for one person, I understand we spend a lot of money on that one person, but beyond that, do we really spend that much money on our zoning officers? Yes. Yeah, for, for, to, to that point, he's not here this evening to be able to address you specifically. However, Are you his supervisor? I'm one yeah. of the members. Okay, of so you're his supervisor. Yeah. So you should be able to know what he does yep. and, and why he gets justified that kind of salary. He doesn't need to be here. He's an employee. And, and with it, his information to us this evening was that he has three, I'm sorry, that he has three additional properties that need to be worked as far as uh, judgments against those properties and to follow through to make sure that they are in fact in compliance. Okay, so what would you say his hourly salary is if he's getting $11,000? And how many hours does he actually work in the course of a week? to justify the $11,000. Okay, Mr. Mott. Let's do some numbers here yes. and find out what exactly it is that we're paying for. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, through you. Yes. So actually the adjustment to the zoning enforcement officer salary occurred last fiscal year and it was based on the 2017 activity. So here's some of what we considered last year when the original jump from $7,000-ish to $11,000, which by the way, if somebody wants to talk about favoritism and nepotism, when the individual who's currently our zoning enforcement officer went into that position, his salary was cut in half from the 20, 2015 or 2016 level when Gary Cimarroni was the, the zoning enforcement officer. So first of all, let's baseline this in that previously the zoning enforcement officer salary for this town in years like 2014, 15, 16 was up around eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 previously. When this individual went into the position, the selectman at the time actually cut the salary by 30% or more, okay? Um, for 2017, so on, on average right now, he's working about 20 hours a week. 2017, we, we had over 75 uh, site visits before the current actions that we're talking about right now. Um, property inspections on average two to three times a week. Uh, and then office hours on the first and third Wednesdays of the month, okay? And then basically um, we're, we're looking at, you know, a fairly significant amount of activity, okay? I can tell you that that activity is much higher, again, than the, than the previous incumbent in that office. And this, the $11,000 is what we have paid 
uh, last year, the year prior, the, was the, uh, when you go back farther, we, we've been paying at this level for a zoning enforcement officer, and this zoning enforcement officer we have this demonstrable results from. Well, we did increase his salary last year by 3000 is that correct? Or thereabouts? Oh, 4000 I'm sorry. Right. 4, right. So so what I'm telling okay, so you is I'll make a motion to bring it back down to the to the 7000 that it was the previous year. I second that. I have a motion to approve. Okay, I'll amend the motion to change the motion to 7000 do you want to second that? I'll second it. Okay, so motion has been made. Do I have a second? Second. And a second to amend that to how much? $7,000. Yes. Is there opportunity for discussion? Yes. Hi, Tom Regan. Uh, Ms. Smarter, through you to the selectmen, um, could you please remind us the increase in the budget item for the zoning enforcement officer that we did at the special town meeting. Did that increase the zoning officer's hourly salary, or was that an increase in the budget to reflect the same hourly salary, but with more hours worked? Through you, Mr. Moderator, the intent was because it was more hours worked, um, and, and based on the hours we were assessing it at at the time, he was still I think, basically at about $12 an hour. That's at the eleven thousand dollar rate. So, so motion has go ahead. Motion has been made and seconded to amend the zoning enforcement office salary from eleven thousand six hundred sixty-five dollars to seven thousand dollars. So this is uh, you're going to vote on the amendment. <coughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed? No. no. The amendment does not pass. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move the question. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to move the question. So the question is on line 101, zoning enforcement officer salary. No, no, no. Oh, we're I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have to a vote to move the question. You're voting to move the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Now we will move to the uh, the original motion. No. We have to vote. Line 101, my, my original motion, Mr. Moderator, 101 at 11,665. Right. We have a second. Did I hear a second? Yes, yes. Second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Motion passes. The next line item I have is 122, 122 school expenses. I just had a quick question. Oh, Mike Siri, West Main Street. Just had a quick question for the school committee. I see this is a significant increase, $120,000. I guess it covers school expenses and salary. Um, so do we have any other extra projects this year that, that, that are out of the expense fund with the elementary school? And that's, that's it. I have a motion to second it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Deb Boyd, Associate Superintendent um, of Business and Finance for the district. The elementary budget is up a bit higher. There's no additional or exceptional projects. The areas of increase are in utilities, which um, the cost of gas and electricity is up 10 to 15%. 
special ed transportation is up significantly, 16%, and there's some increases in technology expenses, especially software. Everything else is actually pretty either level or just contractual increases. Um, it, it should be noted of the, the, the elementary budget is up higher than it has been um, to maintain the services we have and the students that we have. Of that $120,000 increase for the elementary budget, in the state revenue that is in your report, a $124,000 increase is Chapter 70 for schools, which is pretty significant for Brookfield. Most other towns and all four of the other Union 61 towns only receive $30 per student, which is $8,000. So a $124,000 increase in state money for schools is specifically because there are categories within the elementary school in the areas of special ed and economically disadvantaged that need more services and we're giving them the services. Mr. Thank Moderator, yes. I move line 122 at $3,187,823. I have a motion and it's been seconded to approve line 122. Uh, as printed, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. The next line item that was held was 158, Council on Aging Fry Valley Crisis Intervention. Barbara Clancy, Common Street. Our budget needs to be $955. The increase in services here you would not believe. I second that. That line 158 be $955. And the motion has been made and seconded for line 158, Council on Aging Fry Valley Crisis Intervention. He moved to $955. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Next line item is 179, Historical Commission. Mr. Moderator, it's Donald Fagno, East Main Street. Uh, a question to the advisory board first. Um, the level funding, is that based on our request or a decision so, to do something else? Um, all but we, we somehow didn't receive your budget and no one came down to see us with the budget. Um, I believe it is the case. So any budgets that we didn't receive, wherever they got lost in transit, I don't know. Um, we just level funded across the board. Hence the reason why the last thing we had to vote on was still at 799 and the reason why your increase wasn't put in. I don't I don't recall ever going over your budget or getting it. Steve would know better perhaps, Steve? Uh, it came to me through email or through the mailbox system over there. I did not receive it, plain and simple. Um, um, so if anything, it's an oversight on our part. Okay, so we, we, we would support your five hundred dollars, plain and simple. Okay. Okay. So I, I would make a motion to increase the historical commission budget to one thousand six hundred fifty dollars. Second. One thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. Is that yes? Correct? That motion has been made and seconded. I, I believe it would be one thousand six hundred fifty-five dollars if you're increasing it by five hundred bucks. Wow. I'm giving you five extra dollars. <laughs> okay, come on. We'll, we'll, we'll take it. Okay. What about the back row? You cool with that? Thank you. So the motion has been made and seconded to increase the his line item 179 historical commission to $1,655. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Line 197, Water Department Superintendent Salary. Motion for the Water Superintendent to speak. 
Second. Thank you. We have a motion has been made and seconded for the water superintendent to speak. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Mr. Clark, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, so I think we have some confusion on the superintendent's salary. When the water <laughs> when the water commission submitted the budget proposal, the FY20 line represented a three percent cost of living increase. So going with what we have tonight, that should actually under FY20, seventy-five thousand, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe you could help me out with that. That's what's in there. Uh, under the FY20, not the FY20 advisory committee. The, the advisory committee recommendation says 75000 That does not reflect a 2.5% cost of living increase. And the, and the figure that 77250 is actually not a 2.5% increase. I believe, I'll have to check the math, but I, I believe that's a 3% increase. Can I, can I answer one simple question as water superintendent? When when the water commission has submitted the budget to advisory, we we submitted with a three percent raise. That's Correct. what that seventy seven two fifty is. Right. However, the FY twenty advisory committee recommendation of seventy five thousand does not represent a 2.5% cost of living increase as stated earlier. Ms. Moderator, yes. through you to respond to the question, the opinion of the advisory board was that uh, due to the recent hire of you into your position, that uh, since you were just hired, that any uh, that a cost of living increase wasn't warranted because any you had just negotiated your salary and therefore any cost of living would have been included in the negotiation and that your position would likely be eligible for cost of living next year but that was simply a timing of your recent hire we felt that just getting hired and then getting the cola was not something that we thought was the right decision and that's where we went and that's that's why we, that's that's why your that's why there is effectively no increase in the budget item from the remainder of fiscal year 19 into fiscal year 20. And that, that's understood, however, that was a condition of the employment. That, that was not something that was ever explained or communicated to us, so I, I can only tell you that we acted on what we, um, the information we had at the time. We have a legal opinion? Is that in writing? Mr. Moderator? Don't get point of order, please, Mr. Moderator. People need to call out. They need to go to the microphone. Let me, also let me answer that question uh, as the water superintendent was mentioned. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was mentioned at the time that uh, when we hired Dennis that the, if there normally is a COLA, we could not guarantee that that would be voted on. Um, it was mentioned that that was typically um, something that happens at the annual town meeting. So we could not promise that that money would be uh, included. We did include it when he submitted our budget. That, that is correct. It was also that, that all town employees would receive a cost of living. You know, it was implied that, that you know, I would be included in all town employees. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Um, I, I just wanted to stress the fact that no information was given to us about this, about the 16 or so thousand dollar increase in the salary for the new position, and that's why we made the decision that we did. Um, the town can vote on what they want to do. Legal counsel, can you answer a question? Can a non-resident make a motion on the floor? Cannot. No. Thank you. Moderator, um, to the water department, was that put in writing that he would get a, a, a cola? Or was that in his contract? He's saying that it was part of the negotiation, but what, he has a written contract, does he not? No, that was not in the, in the contract. Okay, so I make a motion to um, level fund the salary. 
level funded salary means the same exact budget as he had last year. So, can we make a motion for the seventy-five thousand? Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Bruce Clark, Rice Corner Road. Uh, I've been the superintendent of this town for 17 years prior to my retirement two years ago. I was in the water office during some of this negotiation as a interim superintendent while our last one uh, decided he didn't like the job anymore. It was my impression that this I believe this was in the contract to hire the superintendent. And I believe that's why we had a special time meeting in the spring to enter into contract with a new superintendent. I think you better go back and look at the minutes of your meetings. Okay, I, I, we can do that. I, I, I really think you better look at the minutes of the meeting because you did enter into a contract. Mr. Moderator, Mr. Cook, I'd like to ask a question. So, uh, the former Super Water Superintendent salary, I believe, was fifty-nine thousand five hundred ninety-four dollars. Is that correct? That's correct. I'd like to raise a concern here. That's quite a dr large increase. If you look at what this person's being paid, he's only being paid a little bit less than the police chief. And frankly, if I rank importance of town employees i would put the police chief way above the water superintendent no and and i'm sort of surprised that the and yes higher than the highway superintendent so i think there's a real issue here with how you folks negotiate you maybe you need to bring in an outside person who can teach on the negotiate this is way too high taxes keep going up in this town and this is one of the reasons why because people can't exercise control in negotiations I will, I will answer that question it, from the moderator podium as the water commission superintendent, uh, water commission. Uh, the previous water superintendent we had um, was here for two years. He was hired at a much lower salary because of his experience. Uh, Bruce Clark was our water superintendent, uh, and Bruce's salary was closer to the $75,000, much higher than the 59,000, 59,5794. Dennis brings much more experience, much more technical ability. We, we searched high and low for uh, applicants, this was the best choice, and this is what it costs. There are very strict requirements by the state of what education, what training, what experience a water superintendent has. Dennis had all of those qualifications. He was hired at that rate. By the way, it was lower than what he was getting where he was. My understanding, Mr. Moderator, is that he was the highway superintendent and the water Superintendent Commissioner over in East Brookfield. Is that correct? He was yes. doing the, so he was doing the work of two jobs. Here he's not doing right. the work of two jobs. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So if he's not doing the work of two jobs and he has a written contract, and in that written contract it does not indicate that he gets a raise at the time of the town hall meeting, and it was only a discussion in your meeting minutes. Is that correct? I would have to go back and look at the minutes. Okay, but earlier you said that there was nothing in the contract that indicates that he would get a raise and that it was only a discussion. Did you, were you... The indication that I said was that we talked about the salary that he was going to accept and that the normal practice is that COLA increases are granted to employees through an annual town meeting. 
That is something that we could not guarantee that that was going to happen. Okay, so I see it by my motion to um, to amend the uh, line item to seventy five thousand. Uh, if it's not in his written contract and it was only a discussion, I think that hiring someone and them only being in this job for a short period of time, has he even completed his 90-day trial period? Or, I mean, you know, has he been here six months? I mean, we're, we're talking about giving someone a 2.5% raise that hasn't even worked a full year in our town. Um, you know, at what point do we stop the bleeding so that our taxes start to get to, to level off? Or, or, you know, let's just keep raising everybody's salary and raising all of the line items so that none of us can afford to pay our taxes. By the way, the water superintendent's salary has no effect on your taxes. No, but it does have effect on my water bill that I receive on a monthly basis, which yes, you don't count because you live on the other side of the river. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to I'd like to amend the motion that's currently on the floor to reflect seven seventy six thousand eight hundred seventy five dollars, which is a two and a half percent raise. Of course you do. What, what's that number, Beth? Seventy-six thousand eight hundred seventy-five dollars. Point of order, Mr. Moderator. Isn't there a motion already on the floor? It's it's a motion. Amendment. It's a motion. Amendment. Motion. Amendment. Motion. 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 Amendment. Motion. Motion. Amendment. Motion. 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 All those in favor of the amendment at funding that at 76,856, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Let's do a standing count on that. Mr. Moderator, there was a request for the figure. It's seventy-six thousand eight hundred seventy-five dollars. Yes. I just have one point of clarification to the um, the person who, who spoke uh, a couple of minutes ago. When was the the water commissioner, uh, the water department hired? It was His ninety-day uh, period was up yesterday. Oh Jesus, Christmas. Okay. And then, if, if I have a follow-on question, please. Mr. Moderator, yes. Um, for, for town council, is is it? It's not. Is it law that you can't select between some person? One person gets a call and one person doesn't. Everyone gets a call, right? No. Mr. Moderator, I raise a point of order. We're in the middle of a vote. I believe you are going to take a standing count. At this stage of the game, debate is very inappropriate at this stage of the game, so I suggest that you continue with the vote count. Okay. This is a standing vote count on the amendment to change this salary to $76,850. 75. I'm sorry, $76,875. So we will do a standing count. Do I have counters? So all those are in favor of the amendment, please stand. And if you're in the back of the room, you're going to have to make yourself very uh, obvious how you're voting.
Numbers, please. 25. Numbers are 25 and 44. That's 69. In favor of the, amend the amendment. All those opposed, please stand. Number? Nine. The numbers opposed are 22 and 9, that's 31. The motion on the amendment passes. Mr. Moderator, may I make a comment? No. 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 May I make a comment? No. Now that, you know, that we've taken the vote, may I make a comment? Go ahead. Address the moderator, is, please. It's to all the people that are sitting here. At what point in time are we going to stop continuing to give people the car, the car the address the moderator? When are we going to stop it? When are we going to say enough is enough? We hire a man, and the 91st day that the man works for us, we give him a two and a half cent trade, a two and a half percent raise. At what point? Is and this use the microphone. Going to stop giving everything away. When are we going to stop lowering our tax rate? Stop lowering our water bills. Stop utilizing our chapter nine money in the correct way that we need to. Because at this point, our town is in such a mess with no tax accountant, no treasurer. Our selectmen are just giving everything away, unfortunately. And we're sitting up here and we're trying to nickel and dime it in order to get to get it so that we don't raise our our real estate taxes above twenty dollars. When everybody else around us is at 17, 16, Okay, your comments 15. have been heard. Thank you. So, I mean, please, people in this town, would you really think about what you're doing every time you vote? Because you certainly don't see it. Mr. Steve. Moderator? Yes, Steve. Our current tax rate is $18.95. There's been three years in a row of decline in that. We anticipate another reduction in our tax rate again based upon some initial stuff that I've uh, projected. Um, well below 20. Uh, I've consulted with many towns around. Um, uh, we do very well on our tax rate. Um, and when you start, you know, town government and running a town, we have an $8.5 million corporation here is complex you need professionals these are the right people this town can afford it eighteen dollars and ninety five cents is your tax rate and you've had three years of decline i move the previous question the question so the, uh, is there a second on that so moving the question and the question is Line 197, Water Department Superintendent Salary. The amended amount was $76,875. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. I believe the motion passes. Would you like a standing count? I think that's a motion. That's a vote.
Mr. Moderator, through you? Yes. Okay. Uh, I make a motion that the town vote to approve the total operating budget of eight million. What, what line is that, Beth? That is 202. 202? Yep. With, with the adjustments as voted, the total operating budget would be eight million four uh, four hundred twenty thousand one hundred eighty dollars. And if anyone came up with a different number, let me know. Great. We have three people with the same number. Yay. <laughs> Because of the changes, we're just verifying the line item 202. suggest that we continue on this we really don't need to vote this number they can inform us of what it is but all the line items in particular have been voted and that's what the accountants use they'll make their own tally when it's finished and they verified everything thank you does that require a motion no okay we'll move ahead <laughs> Okay, moving on. Articles 4 through 12. Well, 4 through 11 are in the box. Um, and 12 no, So it's 4 through 12. 4 through 12. Yes. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move the move that the town vote to approve articles 3 through 12 as written in the town warrant except for the phrases or take any action relative thereto be omitted we have a second so we have a second second discussion excuse me we already voted on number three four through twelve oh, you said three, oh, oh I'm sorry I meant four I knew that Thank you. <laughs> So a motion has been made and seconded to approve Articles 4 through 12. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Article 13. Let me read Article 13, to see if the town will vote to uh, raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to the fund of the road construction reconstruction account or take any action thereto. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer $35,000 from the stabilization account to the road, recon road construction and reconstruction account. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hi, Heather Lemieux, 104 Town Farm Road. And Mr. Moderator, yes. for you. Uh, so my question is, is this a reoccurring expense? Just for the advisory board. So if so, why isn't it included in the fiscal 20 budget? Mr. Moderator, for yes. you. Uh, the reason why we place this as a as a warrant article on an annual basis rather than placing it within the operating budget is that uh, there are periods of time when we will 
carry over those funds and by voting it as a warrant article it preserves it across the different fiscal years without having to to go through the mechanism of encumbering or bringing it back to the town meeting this allows us to accumulate some money over time if it's required for matching funds for either grants or uh, to, to use against our chapter 90 monies uh, generally it, and it, it manages to help us uh, in terms of not restricting us where the fiscal year doesn't always align well with the construction year. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a follow-up question? Yes. Yeah. Um, if we have 380... Could, could you use the microphone? Yeah. If we have 384,000 in excess levy capacity, why are we asking to use stabilization funds for this and not raising and appropriating? Somebody can to answer that? Typically, in years past, we would we would use uh, free cash for this, certified free cash. It's 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 the decision that we've made, and it's it's you know it's not as if it's the way it's always been. Therefore, it must be. But that's what we've done in the past. The town has always supported it. Uh, we plan to uh, replenish this with our free cash at the special town meeting in the fall. When is the last time we um, certified free cash? What year? So last year is in 2019, 2018, 2017. Seven, fiscal 17. So last year at this town meeting, <clears throat> um, if you recall, we had two town meetings. We had the annual town meeting and then we had a follow-up town meeting. Uh, we had the follow-up town meeting because we did not have certified free cash from either 16 or 17. Uh, it was approved for years 2016 and 17, and that's what we utilized at the second, call it the June 28th, I believe, town meeting last year. Um, uh, we do not have free cash certified for 2018 this year. That was explained at the beginning of the meeting. It had a lot to do with the... Um, to, you know the resignation of the you know t town accountant just just uh, you know just a lot of things got dropped by that by that office at that point and, you, and my other question is do we know what the balance um, in this account was at the end of the fiscal year stabilization yes, no sir. I'm not talking about stabilization I'm talking about uh, the road um, construction and reconstruction account. What was the balance in it at the end of last? At the end of the fiscal year in June. At the end of what is the balance today? Use the microphone, please. We have twelve thousand dollars remaining. So essentially, like they said, putting it as an article, we can carry it from fiscal year to fiscal year. However, I've only been here just shy of a month. Um, there may be money um, from fiscal year eighteen that has yet to been carried forward yet, which is what I'm going to work on on Monday. Um, so if there's money sitting in eighteen, that twelve thousand dollars may actually rise up higher. I'm just not sure yet. Heather. Thank you. Um, so if we haven't um, been able to certify free cash this year, and there's a possibility in the fall of not certifying free cash, which is um, possible, then we wouldn't be able to replenish the stabilization fund or pay for capital that's required for next year's budget i would make a motion to amend this article to transfer sorry raise and appropriate thirty-five thousand to pay for the road reconstruction account so a motion second. has been made is there a second second motion has been made and seconded discussion She's a menu to take it out of her. To raise and appropriate it instead of taking it out of the state. So a motion has been made to amend the Article 13 from stabilization to raise and appropriate. 
All those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying yes. 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 And opposed? No. no. The amendment does not pass. Don't we have discussion on the amendment before we vote? Yes. Mike. No. Mr. Holcraft stepped up, but he did not approach the microphone. If you care to speak, I do. Um, I, at the beginning of the meeting, um, Linda stated that this money would be put back in stabil stabilization. I want to make some kind of a motion or something stated that that, de that definitely this money will be put back in stabilization. Because other years, you say it and it doesn't get back in there, or somebody <laughs> makes somebody makes a motion to do something at the next meeting and money doesn't get back there. So I want to make a motion that anything that we take out tonight for monies out of stabilization gets put back in at the next meeting or when we have the Mr. vote. Mr. Moderator, point of order. Yes. Uh, this town meeting cannot uh, cannot require an action by a follow-on town meeting. It's not legally possible. So what guarantees we have that this will get put back in stabilization? Amend the article. A lot of years it doesn't get put back in. You can amend the article. Okay, brought it up. Can I call for a re-vote of the amendment? I'm sorry? Please re-vote the amendment. Second. Re-vote the amendment. Yeah, you have to make a motion. Make a motion to re-vote the amendment. Please, please approach, if you would, please. <coughs> Make a motion to reconsider. Thank is there you. a second? Second. Yeah. A motion has been made to reconsider the amendment. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. And opposed? No. The motion passes. The motion is reconsidered. Discussion? Mr. Margo, I'll make this question to the advisory board of selectmen. So what's the amount, assuming that we wanted to raise an appropriate, what do we have above in your estimate? I mean, how much money can we work with? We have an excess capacity of $380,000, $189, $380,000. All the spending articles in this warrant, we are recommending they uh, are paid by stabilization and then and then what we are, uh, they're being, would be paid by stabilization. Uh, there are uh, seven of them and it would total $119,859. That's how much, if we were to approve all of them, we're going to move towards them all, okay? This one we're addressing right now is 35, excuse me, 36, uh, excuse me, 35,000. Um, um, and to Mr. Holcraft's point, um, uh, you know, it is up to us, it's up to the town to, to show up in the fall and say, okay, we said we're going to uh, turn free cash back to stabilization and uh, hold us to that. Um, that's within your power, not ours, okay? So that's, that's what we're looking at, though. Does that answer your question, sir? So we have $380,000 of excess capacity. This would be $119,000 of that. I just, oh, I didn't see you, I already. Ms. Moderator, through you, question to the selectmen and specifically the town accountant. Um, as I understand the finances, um, if, we have, if we fund this $35,000 out of raise and appropriate, and then in the future year, appropriate $35,000 worth of free cash to fiscal year 21 and use it for tax abatement, that will swell our tax rate in fiscal year 20 and drop it a lot more in fiscal 21. And then we get to fiscal 22, it will bounce back up when we don't have that $35,000 floating around. 
as I, if, if you could confirm for me, if we fund this $35,000 out of stabilization and then in the fall pay for it out of free cash, that will, for want of a better term, smooth the tax rate and keep it from going up and down. Am I understanding, am I presenting it clearly? So if you pay out of stabilization for this one and all of the other articles right now, you essentially are just taking money out of your savings account, paying for everything, and then when the free cash is certified, you go to town meeting in the fall and you take the free cash that you spent and put it right back in your savings account rather than playing around with the tax rate. Um, our, our goal is to get your free cash certified as quickly as possible so you can have this ready in the fall to go to special town meeting. Um, I can't give you any assurances, but that we've done this before. At the microphone. Uh, aren't, aren't we uh, assuming that we're going to have a certain amount of free cash? Uh, I mean, we're, we're under the assumption that when we sort up our, our, our free cash that we're going to have enough money to support all of these articles that you want to take out of stabilization. And so you, aren't you putting the, horse, uh, the cart before the horse? I mean, shouldn't we pass over some of these articles until we get to a special town meeting after the cash is certified and then take the money out of free cash instead of depleting uh, money out of our savings account or our, our uh, stabilization and worry after the fact that we're going to certify free cash in a timely manner and get the money back in. We just certified 16 and 17. So we're at 18, but there's no guarantee that it's going to get done between now and a special town meeting. Can you guarantee it? No, you couldn't guarantee it last year. So here again, you're trying to take money out of stabilization that we really don't have yet and use it for purposes to run our town. Would an advisory like to comment to that? Peter O'Connell, Hayden Avenue, and um, I'm on the Capital Improvement Planning Committee as well. One of our objectives um, is to stabilize how much money there is in the stabilization account. Uh, the recommended level of stabilization for our size budget is, is uh, is somewhat more than we have right now. We were at pretty close to 10%, which is 10% of the operating budget. Um, the operating budget keeps going up a little bit, so the amount in stabilization should be going up. Uh, we have had uh, adequate amounts of free cash certified. Last year, I believe it was around $350,000 for those two years that hadn't been certified. So it was a little uh, lower than I had hoped, but still it was plenty of money to fund the articles that uh, we've deferred uh, from this meeting uh, going forward or, or aren't being considered at this meeting. So I certainly understand what Pat Washburn is saying that we're, uh, but she's arguing on the one hand to keep the tax rate lower and on the other hand uh, to, to uh, to drop stabilization, so you can't have it both ways. Uh, my argument would be to uh, to defeat this motion and to fund out of stabilization with the expectation that we will have the free cash uh, that does keep the tax rate fairly stable, which is what we're trying to do. We can't get to our goals all at once, so we have to be a little patient. Let's get our, our people hired, get our finances stabilized, uh, and then uh, move forward in the right direction. So I would argue, let's vote this one, this amendment down, and let the original motion stand to take the money out of stabilization. Uh, Jeff Clark, 38 Pine Lane. I'm speaking as, a, as an individual, but, but two points. Uh, one, we were in a totally different situation last year as far as whether we could or could not certify the free cash. We have an outside accounting firm that has just started work 
and um, as, as the representative has stated, she'll make every effort. And I just, having seen the work in the last six weeks, I believe that we will have the free cash certified uh, in time for the town meeting, uh, either late November, early December. That was to the, um, I forget the woman's name, but uh, uh, Pat Washburn. And the second thing is just to reinforce what Peter said, 300 plus thousand last year for two years is around 175. So I believe um, we have more than enough uh, ability once the free cash is certified, we'll be over the 119 that, that, is, that we're uh, taking out of stabilization. So with, with those two points, I would uh, second Peter's uh, uh, proposal. Any more discussion? No more discussion. Uh, I believe that Article 13, we're voting on the amended uh, article to raise the $35,000 to raise an appropriate. Yes. It didn't pass. Voting on the amendment. So all those in favor of the article as amended. Didn't we already do a vote? We're voting on the amendment. Okay. I stand corrected. We're voting on the amendment, approving the amendment or not. If you approve of the amendment, uh, say aye. Aye. And not say no. No. The amendment does not pass. Mr. Moderator, I move the question. Second. So, so the question has been moved and seconded to go back to the original Article 13. Beth, would you care to read that? I move that the town vote to transfer $35,000 from stabilization account to the road construction and reconstruction account. Has been made, motion has been made and second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. <coughs> Article 14. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money uh, to purchase protective clothing and air bottles or like any other uh, related items. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of 22000 from stabilization account to purchase protective clothing and air bottles. Second. second. Motion has been made and second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Article 15. This I'm not going to read the whole article, but to see if the town will vote will approve the $2 million borrowing authorized by the Tantasqua Regional School District for the purpose of paying costs replacing doors and windows as presented. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town approve Article 15 as printed in the warrant. Motion has been made and seconded to approve Article 15 as printed. Discussion? Question. Go ahead, Mike. Richard Chafee, Town Farm Road in Brookfield. I'd like to know about the money from school choice, what happens to that, and why the money for the turf in the field wasn't put aside to maybe use for this rather than turf on the athletic fields. Deb. School choice, school choice funds actually have been appropriated and will continue to be to pay the turf field. So the turf field will be completely um, funded by school choice. There we have um, will be going into the third year of a 10-year borrow for that. So that 
that is taken into account as we're moving forward on our capital plan. Um, but in addition to that, we have more school, more school choice funds every year, and more importantly, the equivalent of the district's free cash is called END, <coughs> excess and deficiency. It's the exact same thing as free cash, only it's the regional school district term. So they also get every year certified END. And the school committee has voted already to fund from their END and school choice a good chunk of this project, a total of $687,000 in addition to the $1.1 million that the state will fund. So the net request from the towns is a total of $200,000, which we hope to borrow over five years to mitigate the cost. The total for Brookfield is $29,000, depending on the interest rate, um, which would be about $69.50 for five years. Mike, do you want to speak? Mike was, Mike was next. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, <coughs> uh, Bill Gilmeister, uh, Kimball Street, uh, been serving on the school committee for a good number of years. Uh, and I was on the school committee when this, when this project came forward. Uh, and I fully support this. Um, you know, the junior high, uh, there was a certain thought at some point in time to uh, actually uh, sort of do a new building or a renovation on that building, uh, believe it or not. Uh, and when we when that came up, uh, I thoroughly uh, opposed that. And as a result of that, uh, the, the school building administration came in and evaluated the building uh, and uh, said, look, you know, we, we, we can't justify redoing this building, but you, we could uh, supply some funds for uh, windows and doors, which really do need to be replaced. I mean, the doors in that place are, uh, we, got, we got rodents coming in and lots of different things going on in that building. And so we really need to have these and we're getting some good dough out of the, out of, uh, uh, the school uh, business, uh, the, the financing administration, whatever it is. Uh, and, and so I, I fully support uh, this uh, this uh, this article uh, at its at its uh, at this level. You know the, the 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 administration over in the school I think does a really bang up job uh, in terms of using uh, all the resources down there, including using school choice funds to lower uh, the assessments to the towns and many other things that we do up there. So uh, I just hope that the that this town meeting tonight will. Uh, Will will support this this article. Thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Moderator. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the Article 15 as presented, please signify for six thousand nine hundred and fifty fifty dollars for for the five years. Yes. I'm sorry, I left out. The request is actually the exact voted language there, which is from the state. We need that exact language. But most importantly, we're not looking for any finances for fiscal 20. This would begin fiscal 21. The project would be awarded in the fall. Work would be done next spring, so borrowing payments wouldn't start until fiscal 21. So the request is simply the article as written. And that was the motion. Thank you for the correction. So approval of Article 15 as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Article 16, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money for the state mandated emergency action plan for Sawmill Pond Dam or take any action thereto. Uh, Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town approve Article 15 as printed in the warrant. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town will vote to transfer $8,000 from stabilization for the state mandated emergency action plan for Sawmill Pond Dam. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is the discussion? Yes. <clears throat> Philip Marion, 22 North Brookfield Road. Uh, Charlie Baker had money 
out for uh, situations such as these. Have we looked into getting any state funding for this? Can anybody answer that? <laughs> Mr. Moderator, through you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Moderator, there are some, some dam grants out there. I, I think we have, I don't know if we have one out specifically for this. The deadline for that application is the end of, is the end of, just one at the end of June and there's another one the end of July. But by funding it now, uh, it ensures that if we don't get the dam grant that we're still able to meet our obligation for the, for the emergency action plan. <laughs> Get the damn thing. <laughs> so, but there are two damn opportunities for grants. <laughs> so, so the motion has been made and seconded. I'm going to ask for a standing vote. Um, so all those that are in favor, my counters are ready. All those in favor of Article 16 for $8,000 from stabilization, please stand. All those opposed? Motion passes unanimous. Thank you. Article 17, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to continue to lease 8 Harmon Street or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer $16,500 from the stabilization account to continue to lease 8 Common Street, said lease authorized by vote under Article 30 of the June 15, 2018 annual town meeting. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? How long is the lease for? Can somebody answer that? How long is the lease for? The maximum will be a year. How long do you plan on leasing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Please use the microphone. How long do you plan on leasing for? Can somebody answer that? 
hopefully as short as possible. Um, it, dep it depends when we have a next special town meeting uh, to vote on the purchase. Oh, okay. That's all I wanted to say was why don't we just buy and okay. it and open. Thank you. Mr. Pagan. The first thing is, I think it's, the address is wrong. I don't think it's eight. I think it's 18. We don't want to rent the wrong, wrong place, do we? I don't. <laughs> Can somebody, that is correct, it is 18. We need an amendment to check change that address, please. I would like an amendment to make it was eight common and it's eighteen common street. Motion is to amend has been made and seconded. All those in favor of approving the amendment. Please say yes. yes. And opposed. So the amendment has been approved. Okay, Mr. Moderator. Yes. Uh, this is a joint venture between the Historical Commission and the Library Board of Trustees. Um, from the Historical Commission's point of view, um, it satisfies, hopefully, something that's badly needed. The Historical Commission was created in 1976. Um, when we first started meeting, we were in we were in the selectmen's office and stored stuff in their office. That lasted less than a year. Uh, we moved to the library, and we used the library as a meeting source, and we stored what we had up on the third floor in what we called the bat room. Um, at that point, um, we stayed there for a while, and then the, then the Historical Commission storage was moved to the third floor in the town hall, which probably not too many people have seen, um, and they used part of what was in Sonic office. And Try to continue. And uh, the, so the stuff was stored up in the third floor. Uh, after that, um, it was moved. Um, we've been in the, the historical commission has been in the basement, and what used to be the police office downstairs. It's been. Um, at Elm Hill Farm for a while. It's been in the Yellow House that was on Prouty Street. And now we're located on the second floor um, in what used to be the coat room and the ladies' room. Um, it's time we really had a place that we could call our own and it was permanent so we could. So we could Okay, well, uh, so it's time, it would be nice to have a permanent place. Uh, second, we have a, a great amount of material, and we really don't have any adequate way to, one, display it, or two, open it up to people to see. Um, three, um, because we don't have an adequate place, we clearly have lost collections over the years because people don't know where to... They, they can't give it to us because they, we don't have a place to keep it. Um, and we, we're not going to pretend otherwise. Uh, by combining uh, all of the historical commission collection and the library collection, uh, we believe we can make a museum of sorts that people would be proud of um, and it would, it would benefit the town. Um, I don't know if Barbara Clancy wants to talk about what it's going to do for the library, so I'll 
pass on that for a minute, but I can come back to it. Um, I would hope that people would support this. Um, the joint version is that the lease is for the year. If um, we buy it, um, if the town decides to vote for the purchase in the fall, um, the purchase price will be reduced by whatever's remaining in the lease. Um, so would we come out of with that? Options have been presented to us about buying the Catholic Church. That's not for sale. Options have been said about making, uh, building a freestanding building on the library lot. Um, that physically is likely not to happen. Um, we would need a new septic system for the new building and the septic system for the library I'm not sure it's been changed since 1884, but we'd have to um, make some adjustments to that. Um, chances of making that work um, with the building would, that would be adequate for the size or 10%. Um, we just assume not go there and, and try that. Uh, this also provides an option um, so that someday if the library ever wanted to expand, they would have a uh, place to go and it takes the pressure off the library to do anything because they're going to move a significant amount of material out of the library that will then be used for other um, displays and other t books and videos and and whatnot um, so I would hope that people would give this consideration and I'll take some other questions when people have them Mr. Moderator, yes. Um, I, I just want to, you know, we we talked briefly about this last year. Um, and through an impassioned vote, we did a one-year lease. Uh, a one-year lease again is fine. I'm just wondering when we get to the end game, um, how much is the bill going to be for the town? My uh, my understanding is it's uh, the property is going to be around a quarter of a million dollars. That's just what I've heard. I don't. I no. no that's just what I've heard. Um, I just want to know: have we have we had an estimate done yet? Do we know if we're paying a fair market price for the property? Do we have to remove lead from the property? We're talking about setting up displays and having children and people being able to walk through there. I'd imagine we'd have to get a lead paint certified. Uh, we're talking about a septic system. Um, you know, you're you're talking. To f Probably, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what everything costs, but I'm guessing this is going to be a, a huge price tag in the end. So I'm just wondering if we have an idea of what the actual cost of the town is going to be to get this building because we're in such dire need to find a place to finally call home and not wait to find something different. I'm just wondering uh, if, we've had, if there's been studies done and if we know the exact cost of everything. Actually, those those comments are, are really beyond the scope of this article. I mean, this article is asking for money for a one-year lease. Uh, if somebody cares to answer that, go right ahead. The home inspection revealed no no lead paint, so I don't know any, anything about that. Um, the priorities for the house um, would be the following. Uh, eventually, well, let me, let me back up a second. What we would plan to do is, when we, if this thing happens in the fall, um, we would move our material in there, get it organized, complete the um, inventory, and, and get all that arrangement done. Okay. Then the things that need to happen over time. Uh, clearly, um, one would be an ADA compliant bathroom. Um, as possible, we're going to get that done before other buildings get done. We would estimate that that price would be $25,000 based on what we hear about the town hall. Um, there need to be a ramp. Um, to, to the entrance and the door would need to be somewhat wider than it is. That's about $7,000. Um, foundation work um, under the meeting room. Um, 
is to rebuild the brickwork uh, where there's a gap in the front corner near the porch, um, reframe the basement window there and install a new vinyl hopper. That's about what the hundred columns here. Yeah. The yeah. interior. <laughs> The, in, the interior uh, basement um, needs um, an improvement on the carrying beams. Um, that would be about 9,000. The check, check, check. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Okay. Um, there are some joist hangers at the stairs, chimneys, um, the rear floor corner where the concrete is missing. Mr. Mother, um, can I raise the point of order? Uh, to, to, your, to your question or your comment a little bit earlier, I'm, I'm curious what this has to do with the rent that we're actually sort of is before us right now. Uh, I, I really just, I, I wish we could just uh, keep our, my point of order is that we should uh, direct our comments to the motion that's on the floor, which has to do with the rent. And I'm not sure these particular items are relevant to the rent. I'll continue. Would, I mean, would you care to move the motion? You, t you tell me. I mean, move the motion. So move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to move the motion for the amended article which is Article 17, which corrects the address to 18 Common Street, $16,500 per year out of stabilization. I'll take a voice, vo voice vote, it has to be two thirds, so. I'm sorry? I stand corrected. We're voting to move the question. I'm sorry. So, all those in favor of moving the question, please say aye. Aye. And opposed. So, we will move the question. Thank you. Now, we will vote on Article 17. Uh, article as amended at 18 Common Street for $16,500 per year from stabilization. I'll take a voice vote. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no? No. That's a definite um, pass, so the article passes. Point of order. Point of order. You need a two-thirds majority vote for approval. It needs to be recorded as, as two-thirds, even though it sounds like it's better than that. Okay, we'll do a voice. We'll do a standing vote. Uh, all those in favor of Article 17, please stand. My conference, please do a count.
69. 43. 43. That's a total of 102. In favor, all those opposed, please stand. Two. two and two, zero. two and zero. So the number is that is that is a pass. Thank you. Article eighteen. Mr. Moderator, I yes. move that the town vote to transfer two thousand dollars from the stabilization account to place additional street lights throughout the town with the location and type of those lights to be determined by the selectmen. Motion has been made and seconded. Okay. Discussion. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Uh, this petition was brought forward because as the town has grown and traffic has increased, there are a lot of dark intersections at night. Um, this basically would just be a small step. $2,000, if you use standard residential street lights, you get about 20 of them, so there'd be about 20 additional lights. Should you want to add lights to something like the Murray Bridge, they would be more par You get 20 lights, roughly. You might get 19, but 20 would be what you get. If you wanted to add more lights, let's say to Mary Bridge, which is why they'd be more expensive. So, and anyway, uh, just let me say, when I moved into this town 35 years ago, there were a lot more lights. We went through a period in the late 80s where in order to save money, they reduced the number of street lights. Since then, of course, the town has grown and there's a lot more traffic. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion. Is this counting the electrical cost or the installation? Is this counting the electrical cost, the additional electrical cost, or is this counting installation of these, these Mr. poles? Mr. Cook? Okay, as I understand it from the um, Mr. Rowan, who works for National Grid. Basically, when you have a street light, you rent the fixture and then you have to pay for the electricity. So the average cost for renting, and again, whether you rent, it depends on what type of light you want to rent. If you want to rent the new, more high-powered lights, they're a little more expensive. If you want to go with the standard lights, they're a little less. Uh, but again, this, what the cost is, is basically for the cost of electricity and renting the fixture. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yes. Mr. Moderator, I move that we amend the motion such that. To read um, those lights to be determined by the selectmen and consistent <laughs> with any relevant federal or state guidelines regarding the placement of streetlights. And as explanation, I believe there are some people who are wanted them in some places and some want them in others. And I think it's important that we make it clear that these be placed in places that research has shown is safe. Could you, could you read that uh, amendment again, please? Yes. Um, coming in, those lights to be determined by the selectmen, comma, and consistent with any, with all relevant state and federal guideline regarding the placement of such lights comma, or take any action relative thereto. So a motion to amend has been made and seconded. Great discussion. So a vote is to accept the amendment. Vote, you're voting on the amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Uh, the, um, I think the amendment is supported. Now we will, now we will vote on the amendment. The article. I'm sorry, vote on the article as amended. All those in favor say aye. Aye. And opposed? No. no. Motion passes. 
Article 19. The city of the town will vote to raise a sum of money for, uh, from the ambulance revenue account to fund the fiscal 2020 ambulance expense account or take any action there too. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer $40,000 from the ambulance revenue account to fund fiscal 2020 ambulance expense account. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. And opposed, no. Passes. Article 20. To see if the town will vote to transfer a sum of money from the ambulance revenue account to fund the fiscal 2020 ambulance wages account or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of 189000 from the ambulance revenue account to the fiscal 2020 ambulance wage account. Second. Motion has been made and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Article 21, to see if the town will vote to uh, transfer a sum of money from the ambulance revenue account to purchase a new ambulance or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer $270,000 from the ambulance revenue account to purchase a new ambulance. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor uh, of Article 21 say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Article 22. Mr. Moderator, yes. I move that the town vote to add a new bylaw, which if adopted would become Chapter 2, Section 22 of the Town Bylaws and read as follows. Prior to setting the tax rate each year, the town of Brookfield must hold a town meeting for the citizens to consider an article on the amount of free cash to be used to reduce the tax rate. Second. Motion has been made and second. Discussion. If I may continue, yes. Mr. Moderate. This article was, was brought forward because uh, in the past, many years ago, at the annual fall town meeting, there always was a discussion about how much of the free cash should be set aside in stabilization and how much should be used to reduce the tax rate. We've gotten away from that practice um, and I think it's time to restore it. We, we spend a lot of time here at this meeting going over a number of articles of very small significance and we all have a chance to debate and discuss them. I think we should have a discussion as to how we should use free cash and by the way, if the, we were, the town was in a situation where we didn't have any free cash or we had some other more important purposes, the selectmen or the advisory board could always move to appropriate zero. But it would give the people at least a chance to discuss it. Yeah, next one. Mr. Moderator, through you. Yes. Um, in our discussions on the advisory board, um, we understand Mr. Cook's objective and we think it's a worthy objective. We think the mechanism as envisioned, or I personally think the mechanism as envisioned in this warrant article is not the best way to do it. Fundamentally, the way we have been doing things is that as part of the annual operating budget, the departments also look and say, what do we want to fund through the free cash? Those are all decided in the spring town meeting. What Mr. Cook's article proposes is that in the fall, when the free cash is shiny and new, we look at reducing the tax rate, and then, we, and then with no thought or with less insight into what our other needs of free cash are. And so we'll get to the fall Springtown meeting, and we'll have warrant articles that we need to do, but the free cash may have all been spent on tax abatement, and so now we're going to have to fund it through raise and appropriate. To my mind, from a budgeting standpoint, it makes sense to consider the use of the free cash when we're considering the majority of our spending articles that are also the use of free cash. And we can, cons and in the spring town meeting, the annual town meeting, we can also consider it for tax abatement. 
this town meeting, since this is when we try and when we intend to talk about the most spending articles, is when we should consider the full use of the free cash and have all the articles on the table, as opposed to giving the, the fall town meeting first crack at it and then risking having to raise and appropriate more money in the following year because we don't have enough. That's my opinion, my thoughts. Mike. Thanks. Uh, Mike Siri. Yeah, I support this article. It is something we did on an annual basis, and I do think it uh, does make sense to do it at the fall town meeting because it is just prior to setting the tax rate. At the annual town meeting, we generally use a good portion of our free cash. That is correct, Tom, to um, uh, take care of some of our big spending articles, but we, we really should look to using some free cash. So uh, with that being said, I would like to move the question. You can't do that. Second. You can't, you can't make a presentation and ask to move this question. If somebody else would like to make the motion. That I'd way. actually like to speak to it. I'm sorry? So I was basically standing at the mic. I'd like to speak to this before anyone asks the question. So um, there's a couple of different things, and, and, and Tom brought up some really good points. Uh, but, but through you, Mr. Moderator, every time we direct funds from either stabilization or use free cash to pay a, ca a, a real year capital expense, we're in essence doing what the same intent is of, of reducing the tax rate, okay? I think that we, we hear the message of we, we wanna vote on it explicitly, but I think that it's really important to just understand as a community, every decision that we're making at these town meetings does exactly that. Either we're moving the money from stabilization, the whole point of stabilization, everybody looks at it as a savings account. Really the idea, the reason why it's called stabilization is to stabilize the tax rate, okay? So if we, whether we move the, the free cash to stabilization and then vote things out of stabilization in order to, to not move our, our, our tax rate and let it, let it fluctuate wildly, okay or or whether we apply the free cash directly to the expenses we're achieving the same goals okay if we're if we're doing it in a considered and appropriate manner okay the other thing is, is that we have not always historically held a fall town meeting okay so if it, this would force this type of a vote would force us to hold a, a fall town meeting every year regardless of whether there were topics on the table or not uh, in, in order to address it, presuming that we had the free cash to, to do it at that point in time. There's just a, a lot of issues with this where there's no need for it to be a bylaw. It, it can just get handled. You know, if, if you feel that strongly about it, how many citizens petitions did we have? We could, you could file a citizens petition every year to do it. There's no reason to in, embark it in a bylaw. Mr. Gilmars. Mr. Moderator, thank you very much. Everybody hit me okay, I think. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I stand in support uh, of, of the motion. Uh, if I understand things correctly, uh, we don't have free cash certified right now. Uh, so right now we're making decisions without really knowing what kind of money we actually have. Uh, and I think that uh, if we adopt this bylaw provision, uh, then it will force uh, the town administration, the selectmen, and I'm not, I'm not uh, casting aspersions at the selectmen or anyone else here. I'm just saying we will require them to come up with some idea of what free cash is, and if we take it up in the fall uh, special town meeting, uh, then we will know what free cash is, and then we can make a reasoned decision as to whether or not to apply uh, free cash to reduce the tax rate or how we ought to use it. I think this is a very good idea and I support it. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Cook. Um, I'd just like to respond to a couple of Beth's comments. Comment about using the citizen petition mechanism to force a voluntary vote. By state law, Signatures, 10 signatures. If you come forward with a petition at the annual town meeting, you're re the selectmen are required to put it on the warrant without, you know, they can't stop it. If you come forward with a petition at the fall for the fall meeting, uh, technically under the law, 
whether that petition is honored is at the discretion of the selectmen. Okay, so that's one. So there is no guarantee that you could have a vote. Now the selectmen in the past used to automatically do this. This has not been the practice the past few years. And that's the main reason why this is being brought forward. In, in terms of, you mentioned about using free cash to lower the tax rate. Um, what you're really doing is you're, you're using sort of a financial game. Okay, by, you're right, by using money out of the stabilization to pay for an appropriation, right? That does, means it doesn't impact the tax levy. But if you had to pay for it out of the tax levy under the Proposition 2 and a half law, you have a limit. You can't expend. So basically, you're using that mechanism in many ways to circumvent two and a half. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. I, yes, you are. Because if you, if you pay for every appropriation that was on, this, on all the warrants, you would eventually run into the two and a half threshold. By paying out of stabilization, you get around it. And that's one of the other concerns here. It's a way of ensuring that the town will start taking a tighter look at expenditures. Mr. Moderator? Yes. So I just want to caution folks because I, I don't want us to get to the point if this article passes and it goes to the Attorney General and I think there's a real possibility that the Attorney General won't approve all of it. And so I just feel I need to tell you that. Um, town meeting can absolutely vote a bylaw that says we're going to have a fall town meeting. The articles to be included on that warrant are either determined by the selectmen or by the petition process. And there's different numbers of voters that need to, uh, for an annual versus a fall, but that is always, and, you know, we've got a number of petitioned articles on this warrant. So I just have to say, I'm, I'm, I want folks to be aware that if this passes as is, there is a possibility that the Attorney General may strike down at least that portion that dictates what is on the warrant um, for that fall meeting. But again, you can adopt a bylaw, absolutely, that prescribes that you're going to have absolutely a fall town meeting. Through the moderator, um, I'm no assessor and I'm not a tax expert, but I do know from my conversations with the current assessor and the previous assessor that the tax rate is not determined simply by how much free cash we have. It is determined by the assessment of town properties and those assessments can vary from one year to the other. That is part of the formula that is used to determine the tax rate. By addressing only one aspect of this, we're leaving ourselves open to a situation where this bylaw passes, but the tax rate goes up anyway because assessments go down. It's like a seesaw. So while I admire the spirit behind this, it is not a cure, and then voting it in is not going to guarantee that the tax rate goes down. Mr. Moderator, if I respond to the last two comments, uh, you're right. There is no guarantee that voting this in will force the tax rate to go down. But at least allow the citizens <coughs> in this town to have a discussion as to how they want to use free cash, whether it's to put in stabilization or to lower the tax rate. In response to our town council, as you well know, the Attorney General just renders an advisory opinion on every town bylaw. And there have been cases where towns have challenged the opinion of the Attorney General in court. And though the Attorney General usually prevails, there have been some cases where when it goes to the SJC, the town has won. <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> well. This guy's legal to me. It's like it's water anyway. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move the previous question. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded to move the question. All those in favor of moving the question, please say aye. Aye. And opposed, no. Motion to move the question passes. Now to vote on the article, Article 22 as presented. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed, no. No. I believe the no's have it, but I'm gonna do a standing count anyway. All those in favor, of the passing the article, please stand. Thank <laughs> you. 
not pass. That's Article 22. I'm going to ask uh, Donald Fagno to come up and act as an interim monitor, um, moderator. I take a vote to have Donald Fagno come up and act as an interim moderator. The moderator. Um, I make a motion that Donald Fagno be interim moderator during this next article. Thank you, Joey. We have a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. <laughs> Article 23, uh, to see if the vote, see if the town will vote to change the town of Brookfield bylaws to include a full-time position of town administrator. The town administrator would work under the direction, directly under, it's been late for me too, directly under the administrative and policy direction of the Board of Selectmen and will oversee the daily operations of the town government or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. Don Taft, tw um, 20, lane 21. I move that the town vote to add the position of town administrator to the town of Brookfield personnel bylaws, chapter 15, section two, mandatory classifications. Mr. Moderator. Would, would you uh, do me a favor and repeat that? See if I've got it right. I move that the town vote to add the position of town administrator to the town of Brookfield personnel bylaw, chapter 15, section 2, which is the mandatory classification of employees. Do you have a, another copy of that? Because that's not what I've got in front of me here. All right, was there a second? Mr. Moderator. Yes, go ahead. This article simply puts the position of town administrator into the personnel bylaw to create the option to consider that position. 
It reflects the work that was done by the Town Administrative Study Committee seven years ago, uh, in which time they did it, uh, there was an extensive study, came up with a unanimous finding that the Town Administrator would be very beneficial to the Town. This article is in no way, shape, or form a criticism of the Board of Selectmen or the Town Employees or the work that they do. It is a mere reality that it takes more time and effort than a part-time board can present in running a town of this size than an $8.4 million budget. It does not hire a town administrator. It does not ask for any money to do that. This is not a money article. It does not cost anything. It does not jeopardize anybody's job. It is simply a step in the progress to consider the town administrator in hopes that this article will initiate or be a catalyst to start that process. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Moderator, it's nice to see you up there as an acting moderator. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I have a question uh, probably for council. Uh, and, the, and, the, and the question is, uh, if I understand this correctly, this is a citizen's petition, uh, and the petition had a certain wording on it. Uh, and I, is the petition the same wording as this motion, and does it have to be? I'll, I'll answer that from, the from my position. Um, I don't know who put this together. Um, but it's basically the citizen's petition that makes the motion and so whatever I have in front of me is somewhat irrelevant it's what the citizen's petition does and and I accept that the citizen gets to make the motion it is not the board of selectmen or anybody else but citizens petitions well if I, I'd like to hear from from town council I, no offense to mr. moderator I'd just like to hear from town council Sure. Through you, Mr. Moderator, there's two issues. So a citizen's petition has to be printed verbatim. If it's got the right number of signatures and it's certified, it has to be printed verbatim on the warrant. Any motion can be made there under. It's up to the moderator to determine whether or not he believes that motion is within the scope of the article as presented in the warrant. Okay, so if the, the motion that's been made is within the scope of the article, uh, it's a valid motion that's before uh, this town meeting. Uh, but if the moderator believes that that's not to be the case, uh, then it's not a, a, a proper motion before the town meeting. Is that correct? All, all questions of scope by the moderators. That's correct. No, I understand. No, I just want to be sure. Uh, I, I, I stand in opposition uh, to this, and I, and I understand that there's no money uh, associated with this. Uh, but I'm just opposed to the idea of a town of this size uh, having a town administrator uh, this is an enabling legislation, so uh, I, I think, you know, no, there's no money associated with this, Mr. Moderator, but uh, because it's going into the bylaws, I think we can be assured that within a year, we're going to have a motion before this town meeting, if not the special town meeting, to have a town, uh, to have a town administrator. And so I, I don't think there's any, I, I just don't believe that this is not going to lead to hiring a town administrator at uh, some sum of money, which I don't think this town really has uh, the, the, the ability to afford that. I know from a taxpayer standpoint, that's not something that I can appreciate. Uh, and so I'm in opposition to this. And I I would ask the rest of uh, the, the rest of my uh, fellow citizens here at town meeting to vote no on uh, this uh, motion. Thank you. Uh, J.D. Holcraft. Um, if you look on here, and it says under the direction of the selectmen. So this new administrator is going to do exactly what we have now. We have we call her an administrator, administrator, uh, administrator. This this new administrator that we hire is going to be doing the same exact job she's doing. So the selectmen, yes, the selectmen. It says right here, the selectmen are going to direct the administrator what to do in our town, and it's happening right now with the assistant administrator so we're going to be you think it's going to correct a lot of problems but it is not and you say the three selectmen are volunteers 
and and they're volunteer people that's fine if you were select men you should be doing the job if it's 20 hours or 60 hours a week if you want to be a select man, you got to do your job you have to lead and that's why we're in a mess financially is because there was no leadership to oversee these people they did what they wanted and that's why we continually get messed up with our finances and it's under the direction of the three selectmen and they're going to tell this new administrator what to do as well and we're going to be right back in the same spot and we're going to be spending more money out of our tax rate so i'm voting no and i hope everyone else does the same thank you this moderator um everybody keep, everybody keeps talking about how we have an eight eight million or eight and a half million dollar budget but if we look at the budget um you you look at the tantasqua budget is over four million dollars so half of our budget isn't even it has nothing to do with running our town because we have nothing we except for um except for us electing school committee members who are the ones that oversee the money for the school committees in this town our administration and our selectmen really don't have anything to do with running the town, the town school system. So if we really look at it, we're looking at a $4 million budget instead of an $8 million budget. And quite frankly, um, I have to agree with Mr. Holcraft. We have an assistant administrator. It's not our fault that we hire selectmen and, or we elect selectmen and the selectmen are, are not proficient enough um, to be able to um, administrate our assistant administrator in the in, in the correct way, that we have to have a petition signed by people in this town to hire somebody to come in to run the day-to-day -day operations because they have no faith in our selectmen. Now this is not me. This I didn't sign the petition. I'm just saying that this is what's happening. Is people do not have faith in in our our. our our town government and so our our finances are in poor shape our people are coming and going we're hiring people at astronomic prices and you know year after year it's not changing but that doesn't take away the fact that we already have an administrative assistant we don't need to hire an administrator and an administrative assistant i mean here again more money going out the window hiring more people that the town can't afford and our tax rate may not be going up 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 but our assessed value is going up 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 so that means that our taxes are going up so we're spending more money on a yearly basis because our assessments go up and that means that we're paying more taxes out every year my property went up fifty thousand dollars in the last five years that means i'm paying fifty thousand taxes on fifty thousand dollars more than i was five years ago so you can say what the tax rate is but the tax bills that come in the mail they keep going up <coughs> mr gillis you've had your hand up for a while I've been on the uh, advisory committee for three years. Uh, last year, I started in as chair. Uh, one of the first things I did was contact the um, uh, town accountant and the town treasurer and asked to get together with our committee or one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it may be, to their convenience. Um, to my surprise, I received an answer. The answer was no. And uh, town accountant would meet with treasurer, treasurer would meet town accountant. Um, my point being, <clears throat> we have found on this board a very toxic culture working within various, I'll just hold it to the accounting, the financial accounting departments, okay? Um, I see a very toxic culture that was in existence here. I think that is a, a management issue. I think that's an accountability issue. And I, and I, and I, I think that is the Board of Selectmen's uh, 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 responsibilities. At the same time, uh, I don't underestimate the complexity of running a town, okay? And one of the other things you have to be is a, a, a personnel expert to do these things. Um, I think uh, 
We have some professionals who are stepping into place. We have a solution with our town accountant. Um, we have a uh, new highway superintendent. We have new water commissioner, uh, all professionals. Um, uh, I think there's an, uh, an, an opportunity here to sort of uh, reboot the culture of this town. Um, and, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, for that reason, I don't support this as well, okay? I don't think we're there yet. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, I, I would see money better spent on uh, hiring a consultant or, or a coach to figure out, you know, what's going on here and how do we, how do we create a culture of, uh, of cooperation and positive work. Um, uh, I would not vote to support this article. Mr. Taft? Mr. Taft, go ahead. With all due respect to the administra existing administrative assistant, she is not authorized to do any or many of the jobs that the town administrator would do. Town administrator would be the chief administrator office, would be the chief financial officer, would be the chief procurement officer. All of these are things which are not being done now. And, and in particular, Chief personnel office. We don't have a personnel office. According to KP, um, back in 2012, when when the report study committee report was presented, KP law said that personnel issues have been become the fastest growing and most expensive issue facing cities and towns. I think that's a fact. I think we've seen that. The town auditors has identified persistent and un, um, unaddressed issues dating back 10 years. Something that needs our attention. DOR in 2011 made 25 recommendations for improvements in our financial system. I don't think we've done any of those or many of those 25. We have delinquent tax sites. We've had embezzlement of funds. We have lawsuits that have been settled. It's time for us to be proactive, not reactive. This position would be uh, an investment in the future Brookfield. Mr. Aubin, you uh... <coughs> I just wanted to point out a couple things. Um, first of all, uh, in 2012, I know that that's what um, you know, KPLA might have said, but we're in 2019 now, so I'm not sure that information is still accurate. When the uh, when the report did come out, our selectmen did vote on it, and, and they shot it down. Um, and I believe this is a, a position that's going to be, is, is it about an eighth of a million dollars, a hundred twenty, hundred twenty-five thousand dollars position? Is that correct? No. I'm just saying, it's, you know, we're, we're all here arguing about money, and we're looking at a big, big money position. So, um, it, I, I don't know. We, you know we're, we're, we're fighting over things all the time. I think it's something that was our, our select board in the past already decided we didn't need. So uh, that's why I'm one of the six people on this board that didn't support it. Yeah. Okay, wait, time out. Uh, Russ Van up 6 Howard Street, also on the planning board. Um, I just want to point out that even minor league baseball teams have a head coach who gets paid. Small companies have a CEO or a president. Small nonprofit organizations also have a paid CEO. Um, in my short four years here as a resident in town, um, I tried to get involved early, and what I saw was a lack of leadership from elected officials. Um, and there are a lot of people who put a lot of time in. But just because you're an elected official does not compel you legally to have to spend time in the town hall. So I think having someone who is a leader, who can really work with the staff and take this town to the next level, I think we'll find some efficiencies in that. And um, you know, I support this article for simply giving us the option to look at that in further detail. Thank you. Mr. Cook? Yeah, Mr. Moderator. Um, 
I'm speaking as chairman of the bylaw committee. The bylaw committee looked at this article. And I think the reason we did not support it was the lack of a job description. We really had questions as to what the duties and responsibilities would be for this position. So the other issues we have are, you know, the, how much it would cost and how the town would pay for it. But I tend to agree with Steve on, on this. I, I could see us hiring a town administrator as this town grows in a few years or we add more business. But I just don't think we're there yet. Mr. O'Connell. I uh, am in favor of uh, doing the simple thing here tonight, which is simply to add this to the list of jobs in the, in the personnel um, bylaw. And then the next step would be for the selectmen to decide what the job description would be uh, based on what they want to see. So my first question here is two of the selectmen have uh, supported this article, so I would just ask the two selectmen who are, who are in support of it why they're voting. Uh, in 2012, when I was on the committee that recommended this, it was presented to the selectmen. It was not acted on. It, was, it never came before anybody to be discussed, and I do not believe the board voted on it. They simply set it aside. So it never came to a full discussion. But even if it had, uh, the selectmen were not in favor of it. Uh, and so it was moved to, to push it. Now, I think circumstances have gotten worse, if anything. Uh, I don't think it's ever been quite this difficult uh, a situation facing the town. So, so definitely the recommendation, I believe, still has merit more merit, uh, if anything. And uh, because two of the selectmen are supporting this, then I think things have changed and it's worth pursuing. So I'd ask uh, Clarence if I think you're one of the uh, people voting. And best in line. So, so my position is this, that we're gonna have an audit report. It's gonna come down once the accountant finishes her work. Can people hear him in the back? Can, can you hear my? Okay, so, so you're going to get an audit report sometime in early next year. And that audit report is going to be scathing. I used to be in a business world and I know about audit reports. And I know about the DOR, or I've learned more about the DOR than I want to know. And, and with that, I, I believe that they are going to give us the hammer. And so by having this position, we can then at least in the financial side of things, we can determine what we need to be doing to answer the audit findings. So my simple answer is, I'm gonna have an audit report, this board is gonna have an audit report sometime in the fall, early, early next year, and we're gonna to have to do something about it. And so this is a step towards that, thank you. Could I also ask Beth? Uh, uh, Mr. We'll, we'll, we'll Beth come up after. All right, Mr. then I'll just make a couple other points and then uh, I'll turn over the microphone. Uh, people are talking about what the cost will be. Well, first we have to have the job description from the selectmen. Then we can determine, uh, and they can determine, what they think it will cost. The, the, the personnel subcommittee has to rank the position, has to decide how much to pay for a town administrator relative to our other department heads. It would be essentially a, a, a person at that level, perhaps even higher. They have to decide whether this person supervises anybody. They have to decide whether to, how to surround this person with clerical assistance, whether it be an administrative assistant or secretaries. So for us to worry about the money right now is premature. All you're being asked to do is to add the job title into the personnel bylaw. Then it will come back. I, I firmly hope uh, uh, Mr. Gilmeister is right. I hope it comes back to us, uh, but it's up to the selectmen about whether it comes back to us. So let's wait on the job description. Let's wait on the money until they come back. You're focused on the cost of the money, or the cost of the position, but think of the savings, think of the waste of money that we have incurred over the past few years. Consultants cost money and then nothing happens. Uh, we had an invitation from our Senator Gobi to submit earmark requests. 
We just uh, heard from Senator Gobi that the town of Brookfield did not submit any requests this year. Uh, here's here's uh, the possibility of getting an earmark for one of our many expensive projects, earmark funding, and we didn't submit anything. Uh, think of that. It would The amount of money we could be getting in a grant like that would essentially pay for the town administrator uh, itself. And that's the kind of competition we're facing. The money is not so much in our own uh, tax base, it's in the state. We have to be out in the region. We have to be courting our, our senator and our representative, touching base to compete for this kind of state money. I can speak to you as a former selectman. None of us had the time to do that. Even if we did have the expertise, we simply did not have the, the time. It is about a 40 to 60 hour job. Many of the people are doing it. Linda, I know, has been running around like crazy trying to fill these positions. Clarence has been uh, one of the most active selectmen we've ever had. It, it just cannot be done by three volunteer uh, uh, selectmen. You need the expertise. So I, I think taking this baby step right now is, is to be recommended, and I hope you will vote for it. Mr. Taft? Move the question. Well, don't, don't get out of line. As, as anybody knows, my policy is when, when the question is moved, everybody that's in line gets to speak. So here we go. Five minutes. No, I'm not, I'm not allow, I don't allow it until everybody speaks, and then we allow the motion. He may change his mind by the time we get there. Beth Coughlin, 10 Common Street. What, what's that? I said Beth Coughlin, 10 Common Street. Go ahead, go. So, um, I'm one of the selectmen that supported it, but I also support it just as a resident. I have seen from six years on, or five years and change on advisory, and two years as a selectman, that um, this stuff ain't for amateurs, okay? When, when I walked into it, like, seven years ago and started working with the advisory committee, the level of learning, the learning curve, what you had to understand versus what you understand in the business world, totally different. The amount of time that is required for even just doing the HR management, the fact that we don't have professional HR management, um, and and when you consider that like I'm probably the person, maybe, maybe Clarence has got more HR experience, okay? I work full time trying to trying to be there to do that active hands on personnel management that's required to do this right. You know, if someone wants to take a shot at me that I don't have enough time to spend in the town hall, you know what? I'm sorry. Okay, and, and it's almost a joke with the town employees that I that I actually have to go pay my mortgage and then kind of makes it hard some days to, to to really fully execute what we need from a standpoint of providing you know, guidance, supervision, and leadership. And you know what, I'm not ashamed to say it. I don't have a time as a, as a working person. Linda and Clarence carry a huge amount of the load. I try to fill in on the things that I can do on weekends and evenings and phone calls and seven o'clock in the morning on the way into work. But you know what, it is what it is. And if anybody else wants to run next year and try to do it, okay, I tell you what, I will be the first person to sign your papers, baby. All right? All right, Mr. Mahari. So, um, anyway, I support this. I think it's a. I think it's great to at least have the option. To Peter's points, we can have the further discussion about the details, and the devil is in the details. All right, a lot of work ahead to do it, but I totally support this. Well, let, we're going to keep going down this line here. I think I should have my say. Well, I, I, just, Mr. Moderator. No, um, wait a minute, Pat. Wait a minute. Sure. The policy is that someone made a motion to move the question. My long-standing policy has been everyone in line gets to speak. There's been one person over here that's been had his hand up a long time ago, so he's going to get included. Other than that, then we let everyone speak, and then we'll take a vote on whether or not to move the question. And if we move it, that's the end of it. If we don't move it, then we then we continue. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Linda, but... I should have a voice in this also because I'm opposing it, and people should hear what I have to say. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. <coughs> Mr. Moderator. Um, um, 
Mr. Monterey, um, Miss, uh, Mr. Taft over here is talking about how we, we don't have people in place to have the authority to do certain things. Some of our people that work in the, t in, in the um, town hall are elected officials, where the selectmen do not oversee them. Other people have boards that they oversee. I mean, the water department has their own board. The selectmen do not oversee them. The um, town tax collector, she is an elected official. The assessor's office, there are assessors that are elected, so those assessors are the people that oversee those departments. So basically, when you're looking at an administrator and you're looking at the selectmen, an administrator assistant or an administrator can only do what the selectmen tell them to do. So the day-to-day -day operations, but every time there is an issue that comes up where a decision has to be made, it has to go through the selectmen. So all you're doing is taking the position that our administrative assistant is already doing because she has to call the selectmen every time there's an issue that comes up and talks to the, to the um, selectmen then what are you going to do? You're going to hire somebody for an inflated amount of a salary to do the exact same thing, to go right over to the selectmen and give them a call and say, hey, what do we do about this situation? What do we do about that situation? They're not going to go to town council and speak with town council about what's going on. They're going to go to the board of selectmen and they're going to go to them and have them get the opinion for town council. So explain to me why we would need an administrator to do the things that our board of selectmen, we've elected them to do in the first place. If, again, if the administrative assistant is not being directed in the correct way, then the best solution for that is, is to go to the polls at voting time and vote someone else in that will do the job correctly. Don't sit there and hire somebody for a quarter of a million or $150,000, whatever the cost may be, or $100,000. Don't hire somebody to do a job that we're already paying someone else half of that cost or one third of that cost. Go to the polls, elect somebody that can do the job correctly if you feel they're not doing the job right. <laughs> I'd ask your permission to yield my time to Miss Lincoln. No, no, if you've got something to say, go right ahead and say it. I, I'd rather have Miss Lincoln speak to this as a sitting selectman. Can't hear. No, I want you to, if you've got something to speak, say it, otherwise we're going to move, move on. You, you won't. And, uh, and there have been two other people that have gotten in line. Remember, there's only the people in line when the motion was made. And that's where we're going to call the vote when we, when we get there. So you're not allowing me to yield my time to Ms. Lincoln? What's that? You're not allowing me to yield my time to Ms. Lincoln? Correct. Okay. Um, that's wrong. It's, it's very wrong, Mr. Moderator. Um, I, I, I'm dumbfounded. I'm, I'm not going to sit down. The animosity in this room is palatable. It, it's palatable. Yep. Palpable. Okay. Come on. We, we're, we're eating a lot in this meeting. As much as I would love, love to ridicule every person on this board, advisory, select board, treasury, everything, they're working their butts off. They're working their butts off every single day. Although I may have disagreements with things that they do, things that they vote for, they're there every day. They're working for this town, and they're doing the job that somebody is petitioning to have somebody else do at a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. We have a situation in the town for the past few years that are uncontrollable through any board of selectmen, through any administrative assistant. We've had a death. We've had people that have quit. It leaves this board in a very bad place. I sat there. We had that audit report that had about 25 items on it. We called in our accountant, we called in our treasurer. We were told that the majority, if not all, were taken care of. You cannot believe that a report is gonna come back that's not gonna have bad things on it when we have a rotating door for a treasurer. We've had three in the past, what, two years? Possibly four? Mm -hmm. Three or four accountants? I believe we're in a good position now. I believe these three individuals will get us to where we need to be. 
administrative assistant is not going to do anything above and beyond except incur a bigger expense for the taxpayers of this town. We have an administrative assistant that works her butt off every single day. Every day. Beth's not in this office every day, but she's working her butt off. And if she needs anything, there's no doubt in my mind. I think everybody in this room knows that I do not communicate with Beth, but she's on the phone with Karen, and Karen's getting it done for Beth Coffin. We need to understand that these people work very hard and that this position is not going to do anything better for this town. I disagree completely. We've added a grant writer in the past year or two that should be working on these things for $20,000. We've given this individual a different job description for a title. We have to understand where we're at in this town. We have to understand every single year when it comes up to people complaining about the Board of Selectmen, nobody runs against them. Clarence Snyder was unopposed. Linda Lincoln was unopposed. If Beth Coughlin runs again, maybe I'll be the first person that she signs my papers for, because I'd love to get back into it. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. Uh, I stand continuing to oppose and I, and I guess as the debate has continued through, I just had a couple other, a uh, couple other thoughts. You know, we have we have department heads, uh, and we have people that we pay to help us administer uh, this town. Uh, and so, in my mind, hiring someone else to sort of filter the information into the board of selectmen is is just paying double the money that we're already paying. Uh, and uh, in the end, the selectmen are the ones that have to make the decision to hire, fire, or do anything else in the town. All the town administrator is doing is advising the selectmen as to what to do or not to do, and then the selectmen make a decision as to whether to follow the advice or not follow the advice. In the end, I would think it would be uh, wrong for the selectmen not to have full knowledge of all the things that the administrator knows and is recommending on so that they can make an appropriate decision. So I, and so I think that the selectmen right now with the size of our town uh, have enough information and expertise to be able to do that with the people that we've already hired to do the job. Uh, and so therefore I continue, it, it, in terms of the audit report that's coming, again, that's gonna be the financial team in this town and the selectmen are the only ones that really have the authority to tell that financial team what to do or not to do. The administrator is not gonna have the ability to do that as far as I understand the way things are run in this town. And so I just, I, I, I just continue to oppose this and I ask everyone here uh, tonight to vote no uh, on this um, motion. Thank you. Okay, we had you a long time ago. We'll get... Hi, Tom Regan. Um, when we reviewed this on the advisory committee, um, we had not seen the historical, the report that uh, Mr. Taft referenced that uh, supported the creation of the position. And I'd just like to point out that there are a lot of people in this room that do not trust you. They're saying, if we approve this today, which is a bylaw change, then we're going to have an administrator assistant at $2 million a year, or some, I'm sorry, town, I'm, thank you, I meant a town administrator at $2 million per year, or something like that. I, at this point, I am, I'm hyperbole. So, I, at this point, I do not, I'm not convinced we need a town administrator. But, what we are talking about today is not hiring a town administrator. It is a necessary, it is a necessary step to get there, but it is not sufficient. Because when the bylaw is written, we have to approve the bylaw. And then when we have the bylaw on the book, then we have to fund the position. And the people who don't want this to happen are afraid that you're, that it's gonna come along and you're not gonna look up and say, well, oh, what they're proposing is not a good idea. Or maybe it is gonna be a good idea. I wanna see if it's a good idea or not. I wanna see that bylaw. I wanna see what the selectmen are going to propose to delegate to this administrative position. So at this point, while I voted against it when we were in the um, in advisory committee, I'm going to vote for this today on the floor. 
because I want to see where this goes, and I think we have the power, if it's not going in the right direction, we will be able to stop it. You need a mic, yeah. Just a question. I would like to speak, but I would also like to give my turn to, to Mrs. Lincoln if she does wish to speak. I think it's proper for her if she wants to speak. The way, the way, the way we handle that is you speak. Were you, uh, my wife, were you in line when? Yes. I, I was. That's no, why. No, I'm, no, no. Yeah. The person behind you. I was hiding behind him. <laughs> okay. 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 When, when those two speak. If Mr. Taft still wants to make move the question, he will be allowed to make that motion. And if there's a second, then we'll vote on it. That doesn't mean we're going to end debate at that point. It, the, the move the question is not an automatic thing. It, I, I people can defeat that, it. I want Mrs. Lincoln to speak. Well, then I feel strongly about that. I will save my position to her to speak. Then what you need to do is to vote against moving the question. Yes. <laughs> what are you afraid of? What if he wanted to go no, I, I, I want to tell you. Look, let me clear something. I heard a remark out there, and let me address it. We have a procedure, and we're going to follow it. It doesn't make any difference if it's Linda or the last person that came into town. This is what it is. And so if you want to. I'll speak, Right, right, see, okay. and then vote against the motion to move the question, <laughs> and then we'll continue this debate. I mean, we're circling around and around and around. I haven't heard anything new for 25 minutes, but this is what we're going to continue to do. Go ahead. Okay, let me try to gather my thoughts. I'm so glad I took this on tonight. <laughs> I apologize. I'm, I'm trying to gather my thoughts because I've got a, a number of them. Um, as you know, the it's advisory the committee, the advisory committee split four, split four to four, very pro and against. I am for a town administrator for everything that has been stated uh, so far. The only uh, new points that I would add are two. One is that at some point if we want to dig ourselves out of this hole and get a bond rating like we used to have I don't know how many years ago, I believe that we will need a town administrator as a point of control to spearhead this entire effort. The second thing is is that we have to go forward not back. I think if you want to continue what we've been doing for the last two or three hundred years without a town administrator, this is the state of where we are. We need to move ahead. This is a simple thing that we put in the bylaws. doesn't guarantee anything in the future, but as Tom said, let's give it a shot. Thank you. I'd like to make a couple of points, including some that were not brought up. I've worked in companies. I've worked in nonprofits. There is a difference between governance and management. The select board is a governing body. They see overall policy. A town administrator would be a manager who would take their orders based on the governing policies made by the select board. So there is not a duplication of effort here. Additionally, I sense that at least some town employees including some elected officials, are touchy about this whole subject either because they don't believe they will have the autonomy they've had now, which may in some cases be correct, or they're simply offended because they take this personally. That's neither here nor there. We're not talking about whether someone's feelings are hurt. The third point I want to make is that there is one word nobody has mentioned about the job description of a town administrator. Not an administrative assistant, like some people have said in error, but a town administrator, and that is coordination. A town administrator's job is not to boss people around. The primary position that a town administrator would fill is that of a coordinator, and that would include, I might put forth, elected officials. If you have a group of people who are acting autonomously, even under the best of circumstances, there's going to be crossed wires when it comes to communication. 
If all of that is filtered through a full-time employee whose job is to coordinate the activities of town hall and present them to this overworked select board, I say we go for it. And I also want to make one final point. I was at the CMRPC meeting last night, their annual meeting. There are towns out there in Central Mass who have a town administrator and some even have a town manager. And those towns are smaller and have a smaller budget than this town. And they find that this works for them. I believe it would work for us. I believe that this proposal was put forward in good faith, not bad. I believe that we need to move forward. I believe this will benefit the people in the town hall, including those who are currently against it. And I think it will solve a whole raft of problems, some of which were brought up tonight. I urge this assembly to vote yes, to create this position, and then let the three selectmen hammer out the job description, the salary, and other concerns that are outlined in this report. And I think some people in this room have not read that report. It's eye-opening. Thank you. Mr. Taft, do you still wish to make your motion? Is there a second? Okay. Motion is made and seconded to move the question. So that's all. That's what we're voting on right now, moving the question, ending debate. All those in favor of ending debate, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. 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 My counters have got to get up and help me. All those in favor of ending debate, please say aye. And, uh, stand up. Stand up. Sharon, are you, are you standing? Yes. Thirty-four. Okay. All those opposed to ending debate, would you please stand up? Okay, we need a two-thirds vote to end debate, and we have it. 80, end debate, 23, 2. Uh, I, I, I didn't count one on the first vote, so instead of 34, it's 35. I don't know if it makes a difference, but... All right. All right. Well, we, we haven't, we have the two-thirds um, to end the debate. Okay, so now we're going to do, what's that? It doesn't require a two-thirds vote. Yes, it does. Oh, two th when you're ending debate, you're limiting people's ability to speak. And so to do that, you need more than a majority vote. You need two-thirds. I hope I haven't forgotten that in my time <laughs> off. Um, okay, so now we're voting on the question. The question, just in case anybody's forgotten, um, is to add the position of town administrator to the town of Brookfield personnel bylaw chapter 15 section 2 mandatory classification okay all those in favor of adding it to the bylaw would you please stand and count as we're going to go to it Thank you. 
43. 43. 43. Okay, all those opposed to adding this to the bylaw, would you please stand? Twenty-nine. Twenty-two and twenty-nine. Sixty-four were for it. Forty-one opposed to it. The motion passes. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Based on the hour of uh, this meeting, I would offer a motion to adjourn to a time certain next Friday at 6.30 on June 21st. Leo. Here. Six. The motion is... <laughs> the, the motion is to adjourn next to next Friday, 6.30, right here. Same time, same place. Is there a second? Is there a second? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those who want to stay and continue, please say no. No. <laughs>